three attorneys at The Advocates can't actually prevent you from being in a cycling accident. They will be by your side to support you following your accident. Our legal services won't cost you a dime out of pocket. So when you need an injury attorney, call us. We're The Advocates, your Utah personal injury attorneys. You didn't deserve to be in an accident, but you do deserve an advocate. This is The Monty Show, the truth in sports talk streaming. When you want unbiased opinions about your favorite team without the spin, all you have to do is find The Monty Show, streaming live and available 24 hours a day, seven days a week on YouTube. And now, here's Monty. Hey, Monty. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. That's Thursday. On The Monty Show, presented by The Advocates, theadvocates.com. You saw their newest commercial right there. My friends, it is outdoor recreational season at some point when winter goes away. Uh, And when you get on your bicycle, your motorcycle, your scooter, you didn't deserve to get hit. You didn't deserve to be injured while you were enjoying the great outdoors here in the state of Utah and across this great country. But you do deserve an advocate. And I think we all know the people around us who drive loud cars, who just are not responsible people. They don't care about you and me when they're on the roads. They don't care about our national parks. That's why you call the advocates. You get to theadvocates.com and chat with an injury attorney and it won't cost you a dime because you don't pay the advocates unless and until they win your case. Good morning, Jacob. Good morning. Happy opening day in major league baseball. Are you, are you the least bit excited that that my Chicago Cubs are going to win the whole thing? That's not going to happen. What do you mean? They're undefeated. It's not going to happen, dude. It's not going to happen. Do we need to get eBay involved or? Look, settle down, show. (laughs) Opening day in Major League Baseball. Before we get into the minutia of how awful the Big 12 is at basketball, um, do you have a childhood memory of baseball? Okay, good. I think that my, (laughs) what's your best childhood memory of baseball? Uh, definitely watching the Cubs in the middle of summer. Yeah. It, you know, you would what sit in the, the living Giants? room. You would, but as a kid. Yeah. You're not a Cubs fan though. But I grew up on the Cubs, dude. Right. But that I doesn't... grew up when Mark Pryor was dominating. Good old Kerry. Mark Wood. Pryor never dominated. Yeah, he did. No. Yes, he did. As a pitching coach. Come on. No, please go ahead. No, you, go ahead. That's fine. I think for me, I, I've told this story on the show, like the Kodak photo day in the 80s back at Wrigley Field uh, with my guy, Leon Durham. Amazing. Um, you know, I think baseball is that that sport that conjures your imagination because who didn't want to be a baseball player when they were a kid, right? And I think I've been so fortunate to cover some great teams and be around great guys and be in great clubhouses and uh, never take for granted things like sitting on the bench in San Francisco the day that Sean Dunstan had his molars removed, his wisdom teeth taken out, and talking about Cubs baseball and Jody Davis and him versus Eric Davis. Like, just amazing. Like, baseball is that sport that keeps us young. And I think you look at Mark Pryor, um, who was a complete bust, and now it's a joke that you're not with the Cubs still. And it's fine. I, I'm, I don't have feelings, but. You look at baseball, like if you think back to your baseball fandom as a kid, you have actual human beings, players that you're connected to. Yeah. Leon Durham, Ryan Sandberg for me, uh, Steve Garvey breaking my heart with the the San Diego Padres, like 1984, 1989, um, Moises Alou. Yeah. You know, like I can, I, there are actual moments that I play back in my mind all the time. Being on TV several years ago, back, what was that, 2016, when we went to Chicago to see the Giants and the Cubs in the playoffs. That was awesome. Right? Like sitting on a rooftop, sitting in the bleachers, being on TV during the national anthem. And yes, the TV adds 20 pounds, but that's not really the point here. (laughs) Right? Like, I'm much thinner in person. That's just the reality of it. you've lost a lot of weight, man. Good job. Yeah. uh, But I think baseball is that sport that keeps us young. It's that sport that conjures the imagination right yeah i mean i completely agree i think that you know everyone loves to hate on baseball in the middle of football season but then when there's nothing on tv and baseball is on all of a sudden we get a bunch of bandwagon baseball fans to which i say if you're someone who's going to hate on baseball 
you know, you don't have to watch it. Go watch cricket. Go watch, you know, some rando sport that nobody cares about. So that's all I have to say about that. But, but yeah, I, I think that, that I love baseball. I, I, as an adult, I am definitely the guy that's got baseball on all day. Hundred percent, and my guy Justin Fields, who went sixteen and uh, Justin Fields, dude, come on, bro, can we not bring the garbage over from the football field? <laughs> my guy Justin Steele, who went sixteen and five last year, gets the uh, ball for the Cubs tonight uh, in Arlington on ESPN because it's the flipping Chicago yeah, Cubs. It has nothing to do with the Rangers in the World Series. It's the Cubs. Yeah, everybody cares. Uh, my point is, Justin Steele goes against the uh, Rangers tonight. Uh, Shohei and his bookies. Um, you know, listen, I, I understand that it is, uh, we got to talk about Shohei coming up Cardinals and do, 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 lawyers, uh, glass now in, uh, Michaelis tonight in Los Angeles, or actually this afternoon in Los Angeles at one ten. um, the Shohei thing's a big deal. Yeah, it is a big, big deal. It, we'll get to it here coming up in about an hour, uh, because I do want to talk some baseball today. Prize picks, prize picks.com. Use the promo code Monty. So excited. Prize picks, Major League Baseball and prize picks, just the the proposition that more or less strikeouts from Justin Steele today, you're going more because the guy just knocks dudes down all day long. I love prize picks. Went 0 for 5 last night. Screw you, Poster sucks. <laughs> David Posternock, all you had to do was get four shots on goal. You loser. Anyway. Good talk. I've never gone 0 for. Last night on Price Picks, they had a promo where they would pay you, I think it was 10 to 1 or 12 to 1 or whatever it was. But you had to you had to do a five pack, a five flex pick. Yeah. I went 0 for 5. Anthony but, Davis, I was worried about it. He played 52 minutes the night before. Scratch last night. Lakers win. But oh, the but they're better without dude, LeBron. The burden that you carry. They're better without LeBron. LeCap just has not got the game anymore. No. LeCap. Did anybody see LeCap's scoreline last night? LeBron sucks. Um, somebody forgot to tell LeBron that he sucks because last night the Lake Show rolled into Memphis and LeBron James put up 23, 12 assists, and 14 rebounds. LeCap is done. He's finished. They're better without him. I, uh, I'm sorry. I thought I said 23, 12, and 14. No, LeCap. He sucks. He's garbage. Terrible. He's done. Why would you want him on your team? He's done. Never Come mind on. that Rui Hachimura, your mom, 32 points and 10 boards. 32. And how about my guy, Austin Reeves? 89 minutes in the last two games. Damn. 13 points and 11 assists last night. Two rebounds. Plus 31. Yeah, he sucks. 89 minutes, bro. He sucks. Oh, he's, it's AR LaCap, right? Like, well, it, he's no Josh Giddy, but you, you know. know, you know, yeah, because he likes actually full grown women. But my point is, I'm, I, I will continue to tell you the Lakers are a very dangerous organization. Yeah. I just want you to know that. Yeah. I, 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 I know LeBron sucks. I know Anthony LeCap. Davis doesn't, excuse me. I know La Sucks James doesn't play many games. <laughs> and, right, you know, I know that Anthony Davis is always pulling labial muscles. I totally get it. Yeah, dude. Yep. Uh, the Lake Show are now just two and a half games behind that little bitch, Luka <laughs> Doncic. Half of the street clothes, Davis. I should probably go home. I want to go home. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. The Lakers are dangerous, man. They're two and a half games out of a, a non-playing spot. I need to go home. I'm exactly. Exactly, Jokic. You need to go home. Yeah. And I I would also like to point out that if I ever see Devin Booker in person, I'm going to crop dust him because what he did to me I'll last night, what he did to me last night against the Nuggets and Caramel. Excuse me, the Nuggets and Caramel? So let me get this right, Jokic. You're going to lose to the Phoenicians. And Devin Booker is going to be a minus three. And that little punk ass Kardashian only put up 17 points. And I went 0 for 5. Venice parade. Well, apparently there's not going to be a parade. How do you how do you lose to the the 
Kevin Durant, he also sucks. Remember that conversation yeah. two weeks ago? 30 yeah. points, 13 rebounds, and three dimes. He sucks. <laughs> three of four from three. <laughs> Kevin Durant's done. Do you guys even watch the NBA, yeah, fat my, ass? My. Are, are you doing anything but eating those Girl Scout cookies? Or are you, you going to watch? You're going to watch the Dunesay run? Question? Yeah, uh, Roma Dunesay not working out at the Washington, you know, pro day. You know. I don't watch Husky football. Uh, you know, that he's going to stand on business with yeah. a 4 4 five, yeah. 40. He's going to be on the sideline eating Girl Scout cookies, bro. You know, <laughs> it, just, it just is what it is. I, you know, uh, Christopher Shannon, Austin Reeves is a sooner. Better than a later, right? <laughs> right? Better than... <laughs> Too bad. See what it did there? It's like sooner. You know, you said, hey, Oklahoma sooner, but then he said sooner or later, and so it all kind of works together and stuff. Yeah. Um, UW fan Jim. Yeah, nice showing by Roma Dunze at the pro day. <laughs> My little league team coach dad uh went to bat last night in the uh kingdom. I think it was Tom Pechorik hitting a grand slam in the ninth for the win, and the place was shaking. Remember good old Tommy Pechorik? Wimpy Hawk and Wimpy. I feel like names have changed so much now. You don't really get Tom Pachorik anymore. You don't get like those iconic kind of names. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's fine. I'm just saying. Shohei Otani. That's not an iconic name. In only the gambling only, community. Only is. losers. Well, only, bookmakers. Yeah. yeah it's and, iconic. And the bookie with community. Yeah. Uh, Lil Jizzy says morning Jizzlets. First Jeez one in. Let's. OG Gary, second is the ACC burning, asking for a friend. Mike Smith, you're late. You're late. Uh, we come on. Step your game. We up. talked about it this morning before we hit the the post button. We said, okay, who's here? Who's ready? And Jizzy was there. Yep. And then Chad Carter, you're embarrassing yourself. What are you, a Michigan fan? Gosh dang it! It's gonna. Uh, I'm gonna beat you three one of these days. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Not with it. Not with Ryan Day as your alarm Who? clock. You're not. Who? I'm sorry. Not as Tom Pachoric as your alarm clock. He wanted me to say Lloyd Carr, but I'm not doing that. Uh, RJ Seaman. Well, this ought to be good. Morning, boys. Got the three S's out of the way. Well, it's important. Do you know what the three S's are? Shave, shit, and shower. Do, is it the, do I ask a lot of you? Yes. <laughs> Shave, shit, and shower are not the three S's. Yes, they are. No, it's shit, shower, and shave, no, and don't mistake no. it. Yes, it is. Hell no. You do not shave after the shower. What? Dude. Is this real life? Let's just talk NCAA tournament. It could, because, it, Dude, I need to know in the comments section if y'all are doing it in that order, because I am not doing it in that order. It, it has nothing to do with reality, and you Dude. as a millennial should know that you don't live in reality. Dude. Are you kidding me right now? <coughs> hey, boy. Are you kidding wow, me right now? bro. Are you kidding me right now? You're serious. Yeah, I'm serious, bro. That's the order. No, it's it's shit, shower, and shave. No. Yeah, it no, is. Oh, dude. Ah, shit, shave, and shower. Yeah. No. Yes, yes, yes. No. No. Wow. No, it's not. Okay. No, it no, it's not. Uh shit, shave, and shower. That's what I said. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Jake is exactly right. <laughs> LOL. Get a new co-host. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I've asked Tanner Plummer a hundred times. Yeah, he keeps dude, saying he, no. He hasn't dried off yet, dude. What do you want him to do? Well, he hasn't gotten his car out of the impound from the <laughs> RSL match five years ago. You know, uh, John Wokenfuss is my favorite baseball player name of all time. Kool-Aid McKinstry. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of with Tom Pachorik. Who remembers Vance Law? Rick Rushell? Anybody remember Rick Rushell? Gary Woods. Anybody remember Gary Woods? Anybody? Okay. Uh, RJC is exactly right. Summer heat in Texas sucks, but at least Globe Life is enclosed. Go Rangers. Go Rangers. Get Globe Life. I, I don't know what's worse. Oh, man. Oakey Life. 
Better than Georgia. <laughs> I like how it's graduated from they're the same to now Okie <laughs> Light is better. <laughs> Okie Light, the dynasty Alabama never was. Or now, go Rangers. Nobody's a Texas Ranger fan. First team all steer is Nobody. all I have to say to you, sir. All, all hat and manure. That's it. Yeah. Thanks. Nobody's a Texas Ranger fan. I actually love Boach. I yeah. do. Uh, Dan Quisenbar. Don't you mean Dan Quisenberry? God rest his cancer-ridden soul. He passed from cancer. Look, man, that's got to be 10 years ago now. Yeah. Quisenberry's a great one. Uh, how about cleaning up uh, with a shower before you shave after shitting? See, the problem, Mike, is as full-grown, blossomed men, um, we understand that exfoliating is important. That's bullshit. Am I the only one that doesn't use... Sh well, you never shave. Am I the only one that doesn't use shaving cream? I'm an adult. I understand how the game's played. And you guys don't. Sweet 16 is here. Um, is this one of the greatest sports days ever? We get the Sweet 16, and we get opening day Major League Baseball. More excited about? Uh, baseball, for sure. But the Sweet 16. For sure. Yeah, the Sweet 16 is going to be really good, though. Yeah, I, I think that we're in for an absolute treat. Well, I'd remind you I'm ranked 8,764,327. That's not an exaggeration. Venice parade. There will be no parade <laughs> for my bracket. Um, I have 67% of my bracket remaining. Yeah. And obviously, obviously, um, I think this is a huge moment in time for the Big 12. You really, if you look at what's on the line with Houston and Iowa State, I think there is a question about basketball supremacy in this country. I think there is a question about, you know, is the ACC actually the best basketball conference in the country? I don't know. I guess we have to define that. Does that mean that the NCAA tournament is what defines who the best basketball conference is? Well, I, I think in sports, you know, the 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 playoffs, if you will, are are what ultimately define great teams, great leagues, great conferences you know, great divisions in the NFL, right? Like, so, yeah, I mean, I think that the tournament definitely is a measuring stick, no question about it. I mean, you can't be the best basketball conference in the country and be trash in the tournament. I mean, well, and, and, and I think that's what's difficult this year is that, you know, you have, you know, Houston and Iowa State who both have pretty, pretty tough matchups ahead. Uh, and they're in a place where they need to win these games. The Big 12 needs them to get to the Elite Eight. The Big 12 needs those tournament shares. The Big 12 needs to continue to make money and grow and and rise. And I think the tough part is, you know, you're you're once again looking at these matchups that we're getting in the Sweet 16 across the board. And 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 I sit here and I say, man, like the the Big 12 would be feeling a lot better if Arizona was in the conference this year, right? Like you, 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 you look at Gonzaga. You know, the Big 12 would be feeling real nice if they had added Gonzaga already. Uh, you know, and I and I look at the matchups and I'm like, all right, cool. Gonzaga's probably gonna be done because they're playing Purdue. Uh, you know, Houston and Duke, I think, is gonna be an absolute dog fight. Uh, I think Houston has more than enough to win that game. But again, it's the, it's it's the tournament, so you never know what's gonna happen. And then to your point, I'm just gonna keep saying, and my dude over here has been saying this since the tournament even started, since before the first tip off, Illinois and Iowa State. Rolling up today, that's going to be a great game. That to me is the game of the day today. I I think those two are going to go back and forth. So yeah, I think you know when we talk about the best basketball conference, yeah, you need to win these games if you're going to be considered you know one of the best basketball conferences. I think these four games. I think Arizona and Clemson is going to be Arizona seven and a half in that game. Like that feels like a huge number. Mm -hmm. Now it's at crypto in LA. Obviously, that's not very close to Clemson. Clams and Clams and Carolina. Um, UConn is 11 and a half over San Diego. That feels proper. Also in Baston, which is much closer to UConn, that feels like the right number. Um, that's it. Uh, don't be late for that game. It tips off at 539. Oh, okay. Uh, Alabama and North Carolina. North Carolina. Uh, this is the game that terrifies me as a Tar Heel fan. Yeah. Um, because you're going to have to be, Alabama's very good. They, there is no doubt. You look at the way Alabama plays basketball. 
Um, as a North Carolina fan, I am terrified with this game. Um, the way that Alabama withstood the energy that GCU brought to the floor. Um, and you look at the the fact that they've got both Sears and Griffin playing pretty good basketball. The one thing that you hope is that their depth does not come through if you're North Carolina, because, um, you know, if, if, if Diabate is going to score, you know, eight to 10 points, Alabama's probably going to win. Uh, I think that is a very, very dangerous game in the bracket. Uh, I think that might be one of the better games. But yeah, I don't think there is any doubt, at least not in this man's mind. Uh, Iowa State and Illinois is the game of the day. It's at TD Garden in Boston. Uh, that game comes up at 10.09 Eastern. <laughs> and I think the fact that Iowa State's a point and a half is exactly right. This yeah. is a pick em game. Yeah. And I cannot wait. I think that it, we get precipitously less quality basketball tomorrow. Uh, Gonzaga-Purdue obviously is going to be a massive game. A massive game. Um, Duke-Houston's great, but... I think Creighton's better. I'll be honest with you. I think Creighton's better than Tennessee. Uh, I think Marquette's better than NC State by a lot. I don't think that's close. Yeah. Um, but I think tonight, I think tonight is the best night in the tournament. Yeah. There's no doubt. And I'll still be watching the Cubs and the Rangers. It's just what I do. You know, it's a really good thing that YouTube TV rolled out the back button. I agree with that. I agree with that. Hey, did you guys see that uh, Amazon... This Amazon Regional Sports Network thing? Yeah, finally coming to fruition. That's a big deal. It is. It is. So Amazon, so if you're a Prime member, essentially what you're going to be able to do, and it's in market only, right? So if you live in LA, you're not going to be able to get the Boston feed, let's say, or whatever. But in your market on Amazon Sports, you are going to be able to, to buy baseball, basketball, like different sports inside of the Bally's family, which I think is great. I think that that's, that's, that's the type of situation we need. We need to have, to have options. My only concern with this setup is not the convenience, but just the a la carte nature of it. Right. So like, they're going to give you the option to, Hey, you want to buy this game or you want to buy that game. And, and that's great. I love that we have that option, but I wonder as consumers, we're so trained on, Hey, you got it's like an all or nothing proposition. Like with Jazz Plus as an example that they rolled out this year. Like nobody bought one game. Nobody no. bought five packs. You either bought the whole season or you were out on it. And I tried it and I was out on it. And I hated it. Yeah. And so I'm just hoping that because this is Amazon and because we're trained on how to use Amazon's product already, that this rollout is pretty easy. And I will say, I think Amazon uh, with Thursday Night Football did a great job. They always put it on the home screen. It was easy to find. So I'm hoping that it's that same type of thought process where you open the app, it's you know, it's 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 right there, and you can just kind of choose. I think you look at the you look at the teams that we're talking about, and you look at the the spread that this has. Um, I think this is a this is a big big deal. I think when you look at this story, and if you missed it, this is basically Minnesota, Milwaukee, Detroit, Ohio. Nobody likes Ohio sports, so take that with a grain of salt. No, but this is a big deal. Everything in Texas, OKC, Phoenix, San Diego, the Padres, um, Los Angeles. I mean, it's it's it, it, huge. It's a huge deal. All of Florida. All of that is now on Amazon Prime Sports, which is crazy. Um, you'll be able to buy live access to MLB, NBA, and NHL games. Um, and I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be game changing because let's not also forget with this deal that you have ESPN coming direct to consumer, but isn't that what these teams are doing? Yes. This is direct to consumer. And it is, it's going to be incredible. And Bally said, quote, once this deal, once this agreement is approved and goes into effect, Bally Sports Plus will be available for purchase through Amazon Prime uh, video platform for an incremental cost. If you uh, currently watch through a pay TV provider, nothing will change. As a reminder, Bally Sports Plus currently offers fans direct streaming access to your mom's, you know, 
Uh, Diamond Sports was bankrupt, and Amazon Amazon essentially threw them a lifeline. Yeah. So there's a lot going on in TV, and I think the way that we watch, the way that we watch things like the NCAA tournament opening day, I'm telling you, it's gonna a year from now we're gonna be having a different conversation. Yeah, and I and I've ha- I've loved the experience with YouTube TV. I think that you know that the the flexibility that they give you with that is is game changing, you know, and I think that this Amazon situation is right up that same alley because again, you can get it on your phone anywhere you are. So if I, you know, if I am on a trip, I can get it. You know, if I'm, if I'm at home, I can get it. And I think that's what matters most, man. It needs to be a seamless experience across all devices, which it will be. And, but do you embrace it though? I think that's the biggest question. Do you embrace the fact that you're going to have to pay more for sports on TV? Because that that's simply the reality of it. And I don't love the way TV works now. I do not like that, you know, last night I'm trying to find an NBA game um, and I'm trying to find, you know, like I'm trying to find the Jazz game on Jazz Plus and I'm trying to watch this and mm-hmm. we're trying to watch Shogun on Hulu and you're having to flip around to all these apps. It's a pain in my ass. I'll be yeah. honest with you. It's a pain in the ass. I... Whether it's HBO Max, you know, YouTube TV, the cock, uh, because of Law and Order, the Law and Order series, the uh one Chicago series, like it's a pain in the ass to flip back and forth yeah. between the cock, HBO Max, the cock. Hulu, YouTube TV, uh, your mom's OnlyFans account. Like there's just so much that I have to flip back and forth around. It just feels like a pain in the ass. And now what's gonna happen when ESPN goes direct to consumer? Yeah. Am I just going to cut out? I would guess I would just cut out YouTube TV. Yeah, it does make you wonder. I mean, I I don't know. Yeah, I don't know because the only reason I have YouTube TV is to get the main the main stuff, right? Like whether it's ESPN or NBC or CBS, like basically the sporting networks. I don't really watch a lot of like episode-based TV right now. You know, I watch yeah. You know, I watch Yellowstone or I watch this occasionally, but most of the stuff I'm watching is is going to be sports related. And and frankly, I, I I have to say, I mean, I you know, with what we're working on, like I, I use my MacBook all day, like probably several days a week yes. to watch whatever we're in the mood for today. We'll definitely be watching tournament. We'll definitely be watching baseball. Like, and that's so I love that part of it, but I think long gone are the days of having Direct TV where you can just flip around, you know, like, like I would love to, at some point, and I'm sure it'll happen. I'm sure it'll happen. Yeah. But at some point I want to get back to a place where, where you can take your apps and create an interface. And if it's on the user, I'm good with that, but there should be a tool yes. that says, okay, you've got, you've got prime, you've got YouTube TV, you've got the cock, you've got Hulu, you've got Fubo, you've got all these different situations happening. I should be able to, on whatever TV you have, right, smart TV, I should be able to say, okay, I want to bring these different channels, if you will, into one screen so that I can flip around. Because I used to love having the channels memorized in my head, and I would know, okay, cool, the NBA game I'm watching on League Pass is 751. I know that 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 206 is ESPN for Sunday Night Baseball. I know that 212 is MLB Network, like, I, I had all the channels memorized. So I'd be like, all right, cool. We're in commercial here. We're going to flip there. That's what you can't do. now. And we are doing this thing now. Like last night, last night, I can't remember the show she turned on, but my wife, we, we watched, well, she watched it because I slept through show. <laughs> um, but she, she said, Hey, a word, uh, turn on YouTube TV. ABC, uh, turn on you. I can't remember what show she turned on. Right. I think she might have even said CNN or something. And so the TV turned it on. I, I think that's probably where we're going because the other thing that you got to remember, if you're one of those guys that's like, hey, I have cable and I'm never getting rid of it. Well, you're paying an extra cost for ESPN. Yeah. And as much as people are like, I hate ESPN money, those liberal Democrats. Well, that's cool, but you're still paying for it and you're going to pay for it. Yeah. You're not going to walk away from ESPN. I don't know. Does it? Does, do you like the voice feature? I mean, I don't hate the voice feature. I don't I, use it. Yeah, I don't use. I tell her to turn my TV on and off. I'll say, "Hey, turn my TV off," or "Hey, 
like I have a fully automated Amazon experience in my house. Hey, a word, turn off my lights. Turn, it's like I have an yeah. automation schedule. My lights come on, they turn off. My porch lights come on, they turn off. My TV, I can tell her to turn it on or turn it off. I right. can all of it. And I, I, I mean, I think that's the reality of things. But I think in the future, you're going to, you're going to have to have the interface that you're talking about. I miss, I miss a simpler time. Yeah. Yeah. When direct TV was the, the TV provider we, we needed. Yeah. But YouTube TV is now the one we deserve. Yeah. No, but I, I want, I want one place. You know what my complaint with direct TV was though? I could never get it worked out to access it on my phone. I tried and tried and tried, called them, you know, chatted yeah. with them, like could never get it figured out. And I think, you know, again, I, I in the TV space, I don't believe that just the younger generation is valuable. Yes, they're valuable. Yeah, you need the 20 something. But I also think the 40, 50, 60 something who's making bread and has no problem paying paying you for this is valuable. And I think, absolutely and, and, and I think that that's the challenge that that the YouTube TVs of the world are having to figure out like, all right, cool. Like the younger generation is slick on the phone and knows how to do all that and wants to do that that way. But what about all these people that that came over from their direct TVs of the world yep. and and want that comfort? And that's why I say, man, like I think that that you have to figure out a way to 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 make it even more convenient. We figured out the tech piece now. It used to be this conversation was, hey, I got to get it on my phone. I remember doing the show five years ago and we would say, hey. Got to get it on the phone, man. Got to get it on the phone. We're never leaving direct TV. Like with, with freaking uh, Sunday ticket in the NFL, right? Why was, what was, what kept us on direct TV for all those years? Sunday ticket. I'm not going to have direct TV and YouTube TV. Correct. I'm having direct TV because of the Sunday ticket. And so that's why I say, man, like I, I think that we figured out the tech piece. Now we got to figure out the convenience piece when you're at home and when, when you're trying to flip around, because until that gets figured out, you're going to keep feeling like, hey, this is a pain in the ass. And no, I'm not real comfortable being like, hey, a word, turn this channel on. I just want to type it into the remote because that's what I'm used to. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see for sure. It, it will. All right, let's uh, wrap up college basketball or get back into it because I do think this question about what is the best basketball conference, and I think we, I think we tend to romanticize questions like this. I don't know how to break it to most people because the the YouTube comment section yesterday and I, it, the debate between the Big 12 and the ACC, nobody cares what happened last year. I don't care. I, I it, Like history is history for a reason. It's storytelling. I, the reality is you're only as good as what you're doing now. And I I I will... I will tell you that what happens in this NCAA tournament is absolutely meaningless to what the best basketball conference is. It doesn't matter. And I think when you when you look at the quality and the depth and you look at rosters, and I don't think there's any doubt that today, and I think going forward based on realignment and expansion, the Big 12 is the best basketball conference in the country. And ACC homers will lose their shit and tell you, well, hey, Monty, do you remember Dean Smith and Michael Jordan? My God. <laughs> okay, well, that's all well and good. But what I what I also know is I remember Coach Kane. He doesn't currently coach Duke. And Duke is not what Duke used to be. Right. And so we, we have these conversations about, hey, what's important? Well, wh what's important is that Duke beat Houston tonight. And if if... Or excuse me, that's tomorrow, I think. Duke Duke beats Houston, and Houston's a, a pretty big favorite at five points. Um, and that game, I'd remind you, is in Dallas. Right. So it's going to be very interesting to see. I think that's a that's a really important game in this tournament. Um, but it is two of the best teams in those conferences. Duke certainly is one of the best teams. I, they're not nearly as good as Carolina, in my opinion. Um, but I think if if Duke wins that game. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. That's an indicator. But whoever wins the if if a Big 12 team wins the NCAA tournament, that doesn't validate that the Big 12 is the best conference in the country. Right. Right. And we've got to stop this thing in sports where we continue to look back. And this isn't the NFL where where we can all legit say the Kansas City Chiefs are the best organization in the NFL. Yeah, they're in the middle of a dynasty run. 
That does not currently exist in college basketball. Mm -hmm. We don't have dynasties. We don't have, hey, wow, look at Duke under Coach K or Carolina under Dean Smith or Bobby Knight at Indiana or you look at all these great historic teams. What impact do they have on the game today? Yeah. They have none. None. And it's why yesterday I thought the John Calipari story where, where they basically said, yeah, he's coming back because we don't want to pay him. We don't want to pay him to leave. And I, it's what college basketball is now. It is a year-by-year -year proposition. So we romanticize the past in sports, and I, I understand that. We just did it to start the show in baseball. What the, what the Big 12 did last year, or what the ACC has done historically, is meaningless today. Well, and I think in college athletics, you can't afford to be living in the past. I, I think the game, from a business yes. standpoint, changes so fast that that it doesn't matter what San Diego State did or what you know any Big 12 team did or what Gonzaga did or like it just doesn't matter and I think you know the 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 only the only place where the past matters is when you're talking money in TV contracts and expansion or realignment right because again if you've won you've got leverage in that conversation and if you haven't you don't and I think that's the only place where the past should really come up I I, I again we've had you know, we've had arguments on this show about schools like Stanford and and whether, you know, that track record matters as much now as it used to. Or, hell, I mean, you even look at Duke and UNC, right? I mean, they haven't been the same since, you know, you lost Coach K and in, in, in what, Roy Williams. Like, you haven't yeah. been... You haven't been the same same program. Now, you're still in the tournament. You're still doing things, but the dominance isn't there. So, so again, it comes back to, hey, like, who's making the most money and, and you know, who who draws the biggest TV audience? And I hate that for the sport. I hate that it's come, but it is come what it down is. that. But, it, but it's true. It is what it is. And I also think, you know, you look at, um, you know, the memo put out by the NCAA about, hey, we, you know, we want to ban betting, prop betting on, on college sports. Like, I think that side of the conversation is also churning, you know? And so that's why I say the past, like, the 80s college sports conversation's over, man. We, we You have to be now. And that's why I say these games today are more than just, hey, who's going to the next round? Yeah. It's it's about, hey, next year and the year after that, can Brett Yormark say that he beat Duke or beat Purdue or beat UNC? And I, I think the truth is, and what nobody wants to talk about, I think the ACC and the Big 12 are, are dead even. You know, like I, I look at Houston won 32 games. Now thirty two and like ten. Well, Houston's that uh, that that classic, you know, one seed team that dominated the regular season. Can you get it done in the tournament? You know, like that's that's what it is. Yeah, I when you have ten teams in the in the Big Twelve that won twenty games, and I'd also point out K State won nineteen. Yeah, you have nine teams in the ACC that won twenty games. I, I mean, you're. It's hard pressed to put to put much separation between the two conferences. Agreed. And I know that's anticlimactic. And I know that um, again, people want to storytell and talk about history. It, history is meaningless. It, it, history lives in your heart. It doesn't. Li it shouldn't live in your mind. Yeah. And history does not write the picture of who currently is the best basketball conference. I don't think it's even close between anybody. Like the SEC is not in the conversation. The Big Ten's embarrassing in basketball. Um, it, it, this is between the ACC and the big 12. And I think that's what makes these games so much fun. Um, is I, it, it almost doesn't matter. Now, listen, if Iowa state doesn't beat Illinois, um, if Houston, if your mom, like I right. totally get it. I think you're riding on, you're riding on Armando Baycott, not getting upset yeah. in, in this tournament, which as a Carolina fan, let me tell you is a definite possibility. It is, it is a definite possibility. Um, you know, like it's it, Luke Fletcher, who gives a fuck that they've won 29 NCAA tournament games over the last three years. Who cares? It means nothing. It means not zip. It means nothing. It's meaningless. It, it is. And again, I understand guys like to guys like to story tell. It doesn't mean anything. So what happened four years ago is impacting the game today which is completely different financially, monetarily, structurally, expansion-wise, realignment-wise. The game of college basketball is completely different. M keeping guys in college versus guys going to the G League, Europe, Australia. Yeah, four years. Let's go back four years. It, it, who cares? Yeah. It doesn't matter. You, 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 
I'm not, the the difference is I'm not invested in either one of these conferences. It doesn't matter to me. I, I'm I the idea that we would go back four years. Who cares? Like, what does one have to do with the other? Uh, Eric and Raleigh says 86 viewers, only 14 likes. Shame, shame. Um, I, I'm not sure where you're where you're caught at. Caught, we're at 28 likes and 497 total views. So, but I appreciate the the push. Yeah, everybody should hit the like button. Like, I just look at, I just look at this conversation, and I don't know why the, why the ACC defender is so. Why is it so personal to you? Because it's all they have. You don't have football, with all due respect. And I'm going to keep saying it. Like, you, if you want to die on the Forest State Hill, you can. Uh, oh, my I, God. Just the same way the sentiment is, hey, we've won 29 tournament games over the last three or four years or whatever, is the same sentiment that I'm going to have that you had no business being on the same football field as Georgia. Yes, Red Wine 65. <laughs> I ignored Nebraska getting into the tournament. I'd rather them, uh, I'd trade them for one 2,000 yard running back. <laughs> and isn't that the truth? You see what I mean? Isn't that, there's not an ACC fan to be like, well, man, if I could get Jordan Travis's ligaments to be all intact, I mean, I we'll take Clem, let's take Clemson out, put Jordan Travis in, and then have the conversation. Come on. Right? Like, it, the problem is in the ACC is you're delusional. Yeah. You you wanna you wanna do this thing where we're gonna make a sports argument based on something that happened four years ago. Who cares? Who cares? It it just it it means nothing. Why don't we go back to to Jordan and Worthy? Like I said, why don't we go back to Bobby Hurley, the basketball player, and Christian Leitner? Why don't we do well, like how come we're not using that Duke team as an argument for what's happening today? Because it's preposterous and ridiculous. You don't go back in time to defend your argument today. You guys understand. Just, I just want like, to put this into perspective. You understand that that it's been five years since Zion Williamson was at Duke. You, you get that, right? You understand that, right? Like, it hasn't been one year. That was a Twitter thing yesterday. I think it was Twitter yesterday or two days ago. Where people were talking about how Duke's legacy is what makes them a great program today. To which I say, no, not really. No, no. Uh, putting the ball in the hole and defending is what makes them a great basketball program today. Yeah. Yeah. RJ Davis makes North Carolina. Does Michael Jordan make North Carolina a great program today? He no, doesn't. But he make them look nice with those shoes. Them Jays. Them Jays. Right. Man. But that that's the thing that I wish. And this is so an ACC thing where you guys live in this box it is. where you want to talk about the history of the conference and, and argue that that's what makes it great. It doesn't stop using statistics about the past, but think about it. Basketball is the ACC. The ACC is not a football conference at heart. The ACC is a basketball conference. That's it. So, so I'm not even surprised. And if you are surprised, you need to reevaluate that. If you're surprised by ACC fan wanting to die on this Hill, dude, I understand it. It's all you got. Cool. Die on the hill. But I'm going to sit here and continue to agree that, hey, yeah, the legacy of Coach K is, yeah, great. It may live on, and there's a lot of marketing pieces about it. And, okay, cool. Yeah, he had a great career at Duke. No question about it, right? No doubt about it. Shire is the guy now. And ultimately... And doing a nice job, by the way. He is doing a nice job. And that's why I say my point was going to be the more you live in the past, the more disrespect you do to the now. And that's and, the other thing. And I think it's one of these. And again, I would point, and I keep saying this just as a frame of reference. I grew up in Chicago, idolizing Michael Jordan and loving North Carolina basketball because of Michael Jordan. And trust me when I tell you, I don't believe that the ACC is the best basketball conference in the country. They don't make as much money as the big 12. I, my guess is in, in, if we're going to live in the past, can't we go project into the future after after realignment? Are you not? Are you truly going to still make the argument that when you add Arizona to this conference, and I still maintain what I've been reporting this week, which is that I've heard repeatedly that Duke, Duke, Virginia, and Gonzaga are the top three targets of the of the Big Twelve. I'm telling you, going forward, it's the Big Twelve. But focusing on today. 
I, I am a I am a big believer that when we look at today, the Big Twelve I think is a touch better. I think it's I think it's razor thin, the margin. And if you look at the you look at the games like BYU losing to Duquesne, that didn't help, right? But is anybody counting BYU as a reason the ACC is great or the uh, Big Twelve is great? Because I was not right. And we we talk about this all the time. Iowa State's got to beat Illinois. Iowa State's got to beat Illinois. Nobody is going to is nobody is going to cry in the sauce if Houston loses to Duke. Those are two really good teams, and it is the exact example. I don't believe that 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 game will be more than a two possession game. Yeah, and I think those are two are arguably the two best teams in the tournament. Mm -hmm. I think you could make that argument, and that's why the tournament's great. And that's why I say, like again, don't live in the past, dude. Enjoy, enjoy. The now and stop trying to justify the ACC's position based on, you know, what what exactly happened in the past. Again, I agree when you're talking about expansion and changing conferences and what your value is as a program, winning matters and your track record matters. But it's not necessarily just how many wins you have. If it was just how many wins you have, look at Clemson's football team, bro. You won natties, you did great things, and now you're nobody. As far as I'm concerned, you're a nobody. You haven't yeah. won anything in any time recently, dude. And and I'm tired of people living on, you know, what we did. And and I know it's crazy to say. I almost feel like we're in some type of time warp with it. Like it's crazy to me to say 2018, 2019 is five, six years ago now. It's That's wild. wild, bro. But when we talk about sports, I feel like we forget, like, hey. Like Clemson and that dominance is now five, six years ago now. Like they haven't been legit. So when they're in the tournament, they need to win this ball game. Yeah. Like they had has to happen. So that's why I say, like, All don't right. live in the past. All right. Let's see. UW fan Jim. Uh the past keeps fans spending money, but today uh recruits it does. I would agree with that. Uh RJ Seaman says, Monty, the ACC negative narratives as a league has been cultivated. So rich men in suits can get what they want, a bigger bag. Bro, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. <laughs> when did you, you've become like you've what become this happened? radical dude? What do you mean? Like, I'm not here for conspiracy okay, theories. Okay, the hell of a drug. That's next hour. Yeah. You look at these these teams on the floor, they're almost dead even. The conferences are so tight. They're, they, they, they are clearly the talent centers in college basketball. I, I, I think it is, it is as close as you can get. Yes. So G Gary live in the past. You die in the past. Yeah. And I think programs like Duke and Carolina, you know, Carolina's got a lot of recent success, but we're one of those programs that will come in and completely lay a dud. And, and the thing that drives me crazy about Baycott is he's that guy that'll be like, all right, time to put up 25 and 15. And then in the next game, it'll be like, all right, four points and three rebounds and just didn't feel like it today. Apparently. That's that's the that's my but yet my guy RJ is going to show up every single night. Yeah. Uh Dakota Tubbs, if legacy makes you good, then where's Nebraska's championship the past 20 years? Yeah. Exactly right. Uh Q Sam, the ACC has a culture of SEC and passes the aggressiveness of the Pac 12. Ooh, that's really interesting because I agree that ACC fan right now is becoming the victim that the Pac-12 fan was. There's no doubt about that. I think the only thing the ACC has on what was the Pac-12 is they have better management, honestly. I would agree with that. They, they know how to play the game a little bit better, and so I think that's why they'll survive longer. But but yeah, I mean, I, I do think ACC fan is pissy. They're very heated. Well, and I think the only thing you have to hang on to in the big twelve in the uh, ACC, rather, excuse me, is brand value, right? That's where, hey, if you want to talk about the past and Duke's brand and Carolina's brand and yeah. five head winning championships for NIL guy, totally get it. Yeah, dude, totally get it. Yeah. You want to talk about Dion and Ch Charlie Wad at Florida State, totally get yeah. it. But if we're gonna live in reality. And we're not going to talk about how much you used to be able to bench. Uh, the ACC and the Big 12 are even, and I would give the nod to the Big 12. Yeah. That's the that's the reality of it. I, I think that's as, you know. 
Uh, guys, Monty is talking about more t- about 24, 25 than right now. I'm talking about both. As I, my point is, who's the best basketball conference today? Get out of the rearview mirror. I would agree. It's close between the ACC and the Big 12. I think the problem really is close. The problem is, is that when I look up and down the roster, I'm I'm leaning Big 12 because I think the middle portion of that conference is better than the middle portion of the ACC. Like, I tend to agree with that. Like I have no doubt that Duke, UNC, and Virginia are all dominant programs. Clemson's having that one-off year where they go deep in the tournament, right? And the issue is, is that Baylor is a massive disappointment. Yeah, agreed. The, like that BYU Duquesne loss. BYU was a massive disappointment in that game. Yeah, B, that's a game that no BYU should have won. There's no question about it, and here we are. And, no and, way to spin it. And I think the challenge the Big 12 faces that the ACC does not is that the Big 12 has these newcomer schools that that need to win. And, and yes. yeah, Arizona's reliable in basketball. Totally agree. But but Colorado's hardly reliable. They had a but good But Colorado season. knocking off Florida. Yeah. What did we tell you? The play-in game, and they were going to beat Florida. And then you ran into Marquette, and that's where that went away. So for Colorado, you're like, all right, cool. You had a good, you had a good year, no doubt, no doubt about it. But yeah, it's teams. With all due respect to BYU, it's teams like BYU who let Texas you down. Tech. Texas Tech, my God, dude, TCU, Jesus, yeah. Baylor on the football field. Come on. But it's why I say. The NCAA tournament is not going to be like, oh, well, Duke won the tournament. They're the best conference. No, that means Duke's the best team in the country currently today because they won the tournament. Yeah, does that mean the Mountain West was one of the best ter- conferences last year? Like, <laughs> Never heard an ACC fan that said the Mountain West was the best conference in the country last year. Didn't, I? you know, and I, I know I don't pay much attention, but I'm pretty, you know, we're stats guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, the Mountain West, Bonnie, last year. I mean, who remembers? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Nobody remembers. FAU. <laughs> you're going to make the argument for FAU? You're not. I hope you're not. I, I would hope you're not. Uh, J2H, my hemorrhoids are flaring angry. Okay. Drink more cool, water. Man. Giggity, I can't stand Baycott. Every time I see or hear his name, I think of Bacon. Bacon's very good. Not for you, but you know. Uh, shooter, Texas. We have to admit that the tourney exposes reality over hype. The ACC has performed better than expected. The big 12 was less than expected. Certainly that's the story of this tournament. I would agree with that. Yeah. The big yeah. 12 is not, is not lived up to their ranking in this tournament. Uh, and especially when you look at the, you know, you look at the middle of the pack again, it's the BYU's, the Baylor's, the Texas techs. Yeah. That's disappointing. There's no question about it. But at, at the end of the day, who are the elite teams in the ACC? That's Carolina and Duke. Who are the elite teams in the Big 12? Iowa State and certainly Houston. And I, I, it's all on tape. A lot of people argued with me that Iowa State was not elite. Iowa State's elite. Iowa State's very good. Yes. But I agree with this. SEC was stupidly hyped and embarrassed. So fun to see it. Gotta love SEC football and in during basketball. But like, season. I feel like with the SEC, they're playing that game of of percentages, right? They're they're saying, okay, we're gonna hype ourselves up yes. as many times as possible, and eventually we'll start winning. Yeah, I think you can now. If you're the, I mean, in the conference that nobody wants to talk about here is the Big East, very clearly. But if you stay in on bedness, the 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 Big East has a pretty compelling case. And I, I, again, will say if UConn would drop football, they'd be in a major conference. They'd be in a major conference. Thanks. Nobody wants to subsidize old has-been football coaches who, yep. aren't, who aren't playing in stadiums on campus. Yep. It is why USF is where they are, and it is why UConn is where they are. And it's why Gonzaga will, will eventually end up in the Big 12. Yeah. Because Gonzaga doesn't have a football program. And their other sports outside of basketball are strong. And basketball is their is their breadwinner. Yeah. And they will eventually be forced to, in my opinion, monetarily be not forced, but you can't turn away from money. Because at some point you got to start asking yourself how much money you're not making. Yes. So I think it's very interesting. More of us, less of you. Jake Retzloff from BYU in 30 minutes. Um there's a cream for that. Come on. <laughs> Talking about RJC man's hemorrhoids. 
That's so on brand for this show. Dude, Virginia was third. Okay. That's cool. That's awesome. I don't what's your point though? I don't, what like what is yeah, what yeah, is what do you what do you that's yeah, great. I agree, but what's your point? I and I I am not I am not disrespecting Virginia at all. No, I think but, I think Virginia is one of the top teams in the ACC. Like But I'm just asking what does it have to do in, in terms of this conversation, what does that have to do? Because I look at the brackets and I look at Auburn was a huge disappointment for the SEC, right? Like, but is UAB, a, no, nobody cares that they lost, right? Is, is, I, I just don't know. What is the one-off conversation about Virginia? And please feel free to, please feel free to, to espouse. I'm, I'm happy to have the conversation because again, I think there's a lot of ACC fans who think I'm telling you the ACC is not a good conference. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that the Big 12 is exponentially better. But right here, right now, today, they make more money. Um, I think that they have more access and they have far more stability. And I don't care who wins the NCAA tournament because that's not going to determine who the best basketball conference is. Right. That's the best team, no doubt. But that does not determine who the best basketball conference is. Sorry to disappoint you, but that's just not it. Uh, and yes, the Big East is pretty good. Um, Virginia was third place, shows how shallow the ACC is. I think when you look at the ACC, and I think when you look at, and we were just doing this essentially, when you look at the ACC and you look at, you look at the fact that Virginia was third, but they won 23 games. Yeah. That's a 23 and 11 team. Yeah, Pitt. That's a 22 win team. Do you think that's accidental? Right. I mean, I, I look at Clemson. Clemson's still alive at it, and they're a 23 win team. Like that's a legitimately good and deep quality conference. Yeah. There's no there. There's no doubt about it. Now, would it have been nice if Virginia would have made a a a better run? Yeah, it would have been nice. Would it have been nice if they had beat Colorado State? Yeah, it would have been nice. But they didn't. So we can sit here and we can have that conversation, but I just think we are looking at a situation where these two conferences are so close. Yes. They're so close. And I, I, again, I, I just, I'm not, I'm, as you know, I'm not the guy that's like, well, the ACC sucks because I think the big 12 is better. Thanks. That's not what it is. It isn't big 12 uh, definitely has a brighter future than the ACC with picking up eight teams over the past couple of years and being the best basketball conference along with a better commissioner in BY. Yeah, and you happen to pick up one of the best teams in the country in Houston, which helps a lot. you got a, a basketball program in Cincinnati that can compete. Yes. BYU, you ready, Jake? BYU's on the common basketball. <laughs> um. Who knows where UCF goes, but if you look at Arizona and Colorado, how are you not excited about that? You should be. You can't get excited about Utah men's basketball because it just has not been there. They have not, their program has not performed over the last several years. Better this year, the women's program, phenomenal. But U Utah men's basketball, got a lot to prove, right? Yeah. So we'll see. James, the unofficial mayor of Cowboy Country. Well, money, money. We got to talk about the hot dogs in the Big 12 Conference. That get that puts us over the top. <laughs> you ask me, the ACC is a Nacho Bel Grande kind of conference. <laughs> Canned jalapenos too. If you want, if you want real jalapenos, you got to slice them after you pick them. Okay, uh, Miami really needs to build that on-campus stadium. <laughs> so on brand. If the Hurricanes were a powerhouse again the ACC would get more TV money because FSU and Miami would be must-see TV like it used to be. I think everybody just throws out the statement, well, they need they better build an on-campus stadium and money. at UCLA. Where are you going to put it? Well, money, I'll figure it out. I mean, they could put it on the ocean. Okay, where are you going to put it in, in Miami? On campus at Miami in a community that is as dysfunctional as any city in this country, they can't agree to fund toilet paper 
in bathrooms in that state. And you think they're going to build an on-campus stadium. They're not. They're not. Uh, let's see. RGC, man. Pitt beat North Carolina State twice. Beat Duke at Cameron. UVA in Virginia. Stop the BS. Okay, again, what are you talking about? Okay. okay. I don't. I, I just don't understand. Like, okay, cool. Like, that's great, but. Okay. Neat. That's awesome. Seton Hall should have been in. Uh, it's just one of the great travesties, the injustice. Yeah, how could they not have Seton Hall in the tournament, and dude? The Pirates. I mean, uh, man. UW fan, Jim, I can't wait for Williams to a Dunze in the end zone. May change my name to Bears fan, Jim. I'm not playing your game today. I'm, I'm Mike Smith. Big East is bat is a basketball conference. It has always had good basketball schools. Schools put basketball uh, first in the Big East. And I love how people are like, oh, the Big East is getting disrespected. How are they getting disrespected? Yeah, I'm not sure how we're saying that. Nobody's disrespecting the Big East. Nobody. Nobody in this country that covers basketball is like, oh, that conference. Nobody is saying that. So the idea that, and again, I, I don't, maybe this just is what we are in sports today. I think it very much is. And I think it's in society today. We're going to talk about conspiracy theories coming up. But I think it's hysterical to me that people are like, well, you know, this is what I want the fact to be. So let me throw some shit out there to make my facts sound better. Nobody's disrespecting the ACC. Nobody's disrespecting the Big East. Nobody. Nobody. Stop with the narrative that you're a victim. You're not a victim. It's easy to be a victim, bro. Hard JC, man. Tell me again why Pitt not in the tourney. Okay, next comment. Uh, <laughs> Mike, screw all Pennsylvania sports teams. Okay. I'm with you. I agree. I agree. Giggity. Uh, I think he meant Virginia had no business in the tournament, yet they were a third C in the ACC this year. We can go back and rewrite history. Sure, certainly. No, we're not talking about who should or shouldn't have been in. That's not what we're talking about. Like, keep I up. don't disagree. We talked about Pitt on the show uh, on after Selection Sunday. I don't disagree that people had cases to be made. The Big East probably should have had. Ask, ask Hurley. He was railing on this the other night. Mm -hmm. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, but they didn't get in. They didn't get in. It is it is what it is. Uh, David Ute fan. Hey there, uh, there. Hey, there you are. Used to watch you in the afternoons, not usually watching at this butt crack of dawn. <laughs> we don't watch our show in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Eric and Raleigh, why are you looking in the past at Utah basketball? Listen, Keith Van Horn was unbelievable. Do you guys remember Andre Miller? Guys, I'll tell guys, you guys, what. Guys, 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 I'll tell you what. If LA Gem were still alive, I love that from like state of Utah basketball jazz fan. fan. Jazz fan being like, hey, well, if LA Gem was still alive, he's dead. We 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 <laughs> would have won a championship with Laurie already. Okay, he's dead. So. <laughs> Can you can you can you realive him, please? Can we can we respawn? Um, Luke Fletcher for ten dollars this season. The ACC is eleven and three against the Big Twelve. Wow, that's unbelievable! Dude, wow, I mean, can you imagine the? Uh, whoa, 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 whoa! Listen to the victimhood, and I'm going to guess you're an ACC fan. I I'm just assuming the conference widely considered to be the deep, deepest conference in the country. It's not widely considered to be. It is. Stay hard. It why why pay ten dollars to be a victim? No, it, like what is your what does this mean? Oh, the ACC they must be a better conference because that's what you paid ten dollars to say. Well, we are eleven and three against you, and you're widely believed to be the deepest conference. What is what does that have to do with anything? Like it's this kind of narrative. This is why we can't have nice things. Exactly. This is why we can't have nice things because, well, Monty, it's not great. The ACC is a better basketball conference. Wow, dude. Like, oh, my God. Now, cow, now somebody bro. call Mother Nature. The sun can come up. The dude. sun can come up. Somebody call the moon and tell him to fuck off because now the, the Monty said the ACC is a better conference. The sun can now rise. It's the fucking vernal equinox. <laughs> like... What do you, what do you, why are you playing the victim, ACC fan? 
And I think what's what you said, because you don't have football to lean on. Yeah. What, where else are they going to go? What, are you going to go to golf? Like, like what, where are you going to go? I, I Baseball? You're not deeper. Swimming? You're not better. Ping pong? Than the Big 12. I think it's really close. But I think you look at, there's all kinds of, was Kansas Kansas this year? They weren't. No. That's why it was closer. You needed to even be in a conversation. You needed Kansas to have their coach have medical issues and their best player get hurt. That's the only reason this is close. <laughs> it's the only reason it's close. Yeah. Kansas isn't Kansas this year. I, I just that's just, you know. Um, it is what it is. Robert Fowler, this show has turned into an ACC versus Big 12 battle. Apparently. Because uh, it is so funny to me the way, like, I think ACC fan has truly stepped in for Pac-12 fan. Well, as the ACC is getting terribly close to being stepping in for Big Ten fan. Yeah. With Michigan and Ohio State. Yeah. Exactly, Monty. If you don't like their teams, you're a hater. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, it's why when we talk about, you know, offensive linemen that transferred to Iowa and we laughed at them when they transferred to Iowa and now that they've transferred back to Alabama and it was he was coming home <laughs> He's my, the heart. Kid. he wanted to go Hawks like I mean wow man NIL doesn't matter to this kid and then the kid transfers back to Alabama and Iowa fans like that kid's fucking fat ass he couldn't have played here anyway <laughs> he figured out he wasn't going to start okay you know uh zesties retro in games my guy hey guys 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 it's MLB season. Let's go, Let's go. Royals. Let's go Royals. Dude, you did so well until you said Royals. Nobody's a Royals fan. <laughs> Nobody is a fan of the Texas League. Nobody. Nobody. Eric and Raleigh. Rick Majerus. Yes. Dead. Krispy Kreme fan. Dead. Rick Majerus was an interesting cat. One of the best stories I've ever had was, man, I can't remember who it was. We had some, we had, when I worked at Sporting News Radio, mm -hmm. we were doing a show and I can't, Steve Lavin, Steve Lavin was a guest on my show and a story came up about Rick Majerus and I happened to have Rick Majerus's contact information. I knew him well from my time in St. Louis. The Adams Mark, the Krispy Kremes, yeah. it, it's synergistically speaking. And so we called Rick Majerus and he came on and I never said another word for like the next 10 minutes. I'm pretty sure it was Steve Lavin and Rick Majerus just went back and forth storytelling. For It was the greatest thing ever. Rick Majerus was such a character. Uh, it is what it is. Not good enough when the national narrative created the prejudice. Okay, again. You know we're dude, talking basketball, bro, right? Bro, we're not talking about Biden being responsible for the bridge collapse here, okay? That's not what we're talking I about, I cannot right? wait for that segment. <laughs> <laughs> the idea that Joe Biden knocked the Baltimore Bridge down to make Pete Buttigieg a hero? <laughs> we're going to murder people knock a bridge down, destroy cargo and part of a cargo ship and decimate commerce in this country, negatively impact the economy and the supply chain so that Mayor Pete can be a hero. You don't always have to be negative. Oh, it makes perfect sense. Front page shit, run it. <laughs> I'm giving you a fucking answer. What? That's going to be amazing. Uh, OG Gary, ACC fan definitely sounds like Pac-12. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The ACC isn't even going to be in existence in three years. We'll see. The Buffalo Hunter. Monty, please swear more. Fuck you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, Eric and Raleigh. ACC baseball is outstanding. Jake, watch yourself. It is. What the a fuck are you, Ranger Rick? ACC base. He is actually a college baseball fan, and it's disgusting. Yeah. It's yeah. terrible. Uh, hopefully, Kansas is never Kansas again. A man can dream. Wow, I mean, you guys remember back when Quinn Snyder was cheating at Missouri? By God, yeah, 
Top Bill Self, everything he knows. John DeLon, if I were a fan of an ACC team, I'd stop worrying about my conference national respect level and start worrying about where my team is going to go when the ACC sinks. I mean, you're not wrong. Truth. You're not wrong. Man, do you guys remember 10 years ago on Monty's show when we were arguing Pack about... Up. We're out of here! You guys remember the ACC, the old ACC conference? You guys remember when we were on Monty's show? You know, like it was old Trigger Monty back then. Yeah, you guys and, remember the Monty show that that show that was on Bro Bible yesterday and yeah. got national run and stuff. Yeah, that show. Remember that show, the Monty show that got credit for finally got credit for one fucking story on Pro Bible and NBC. <laughs> you guys remember that? That was fucking amazing. And he was talking about how you, you also remember the old ACC conference where he was talking about how the ACC was the best basketball conference anybody had ever seen ever anywhere in any country ever. And then it melted down. And it was, man, that was before your time. You guys were millennials back. I hope it won't come to that. <laughs> That's what it's going to be. <laughs> let's be honest. Uh, Dan R., let's go Illini. Sorry, I know you guys love the Big 12. I grew up. Monty. Monty Dan, you son of a biscuit. Monty, I know you're a, a, a red-blooded Big 12 truck stop conference fan. Dan, two words. Two words. Kenny Battle ripped a backboard down. Okay, that's like eight words, dude. Shut the fuck up, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny Battle ripped a backboard down. Do you remember Kenny Battle? I don't think you do. I don't think you do. When you're done scratching your brown eye, go look up Kenny Battle flying a line eye. He doesn't scratch it. He sprays it with his bidet. <laughs> Once you get off the bidet, you son of a biscuit. You go check Flying Illini Kenny Battle. Kendall Gill, too. Just not Glenn Rice versus Illinois. Don't don't search that. <laughs> don't. Salt Lake A's. Anything? Yeah, sure. Yeah, wow. Dude, stay hard. Zesty, you and I both know the season is already over. Oh, God. Uh, we're, coming, uh, we're coming back next year. Just you wait. Nobody. You're not. You're not. It's over. It's over. Uh, one on one sports. Oh yeah, absolutely. Back that what in the we're day. calling it now. It used to be. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any idea how many diapers one on one sports paid Macaque. for in your life? Nope. Good lord. Uh, Ghost Rose. We don't talk Dude, like that, bro. Dude, this is a family on, show. Man. I I don't need chess buzzer, garbage can guy. You know, talking <laughs> talking about you know the Strohs. So. Boss Frog. <laughs> My guy, Boss Frog, who's a huge Astros fan, yesterday is in the chat talking about how the Astros are this and that. And everybody went right to garbage can sign stealer guy <laughs> and was like, sign stealer guy. So, of course, I had to throw it out there. Like, I wonder, he's like, oh man, that was five years ago already. It was like, yeah, I wonder if chess buzzer technology has improved in the last five years. <laughs> Oh, that midget Altuve. Oh, I'm sorry. That little person Altuve. Yeah, hey, Monty, Monty, do you know why Altuve started buttoning up his, his uniform? Don't you touch it. Don't you touch yeah. it. Don't don't well, rip it off. Well, Monty, he just wanted to preserve the history that was created in that in that jersey. Yeah. Well, I mean, he had to cover the chest buzzer. But, you know, who doesn't like a little nipple stimulation running the bases? It's all the same. You know. Uh, Keith Carl. A Royals fan can dream of a 500 team if they want to. You can't. So I know Brett Saberhagen a little bit. He even knows you're not going to be a 500 team. No. He knows it. I know it. Bobby Witt Jr. knows it. Eric Hosmer knows it. No. Come on. You know. Uh, John DeLon. It's on life support with no hope of recovering. It's just a matter of time before in, it its spirit breaks on through the other side. I don't know what you guys are talking okay. about, but uh, okay. Did you? It, it was, t was it? Uh, is it Ayahuasca Day on the Monty program? Yeah. Is it like crack cocaine Thursday or? Uh, Van Horn, Doliak, Miller. What a great team that Utah team was. Michael Doliak. Hey, Doliak. Hey, Doliak. Yeah, well, uh, Doliak or Dolmerwaf. What's Fucking it going to be? Prick. Uh, they made a Final Four run. Man, that's really cool. Nobody I guess, cares. I guess the Pac-12 is the best conference <laughs> in the country. I mean, Michael Doliak made a Final Four run. Andre Miller and shit. Like, I mean, Krispy Kreme's at Utah. Like, you can't tell me that the Pac-12 is not the best basketball conference uh, in the country. I'm not here for it. 
I, I I know the history of this. Well, conference. now and now, Monty, Monty. Now the Pac-12's got a na national TV deal, so that makes them an even better well, conference. They're thirty-seven, ten, two, and four on Mondays, where the temperature is sixty-one degrees or less, and the humidity's humidity's below thirty-two percent. And when they got a tenth of an inch of a milligram of a liter of a quart of rain that day in 31 counties across the country. That to me proves that the Pac-12 is the best basketball conference in the country. And don't you bring your bullshit with your barometric pressure either, because I'm going with, with inches of rain. And so trust me, experts. trust me what I know. I know inches, ask your mom. Can you measure it? Prove me wrong. <clears throat> is that about right, Luke? I think it's- Good talk, that, Luke. That Good talk. Right. All right, Q Sam. <laughs> They saw the lights go out before the impact and got the their QA non hats on. Now listen, I saw that cargo ship drifting towards the bridge, and then you know Sleepy Joe he turned off the lights, he cut the power. He wanted Mayor Pete to be a hero. Well, it's a real damn shame because those all those Connex boxes were going to be used at the border, and now you know we can't really use them. They're you all know, dented and, and stuff. The truth is, Uncle Joe has done nothing for the economy, and you know. Four more years is coming back to office, and we're gonna we're gonna have the greatest economy anybody's seen. Uh, hey, bud, uh, the economy is way better than it was during four more years. That's some bullshit. You have no proof of that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> what the uh, in, inflation is lower, and the people are making more. The job. That's all bullshit. Four more years. That's a that guys, guys, guys. That's I a saw left wing conspiracy. I saw those ballots under the table. Yeah, I feel better about myself. Uh, Eric and rally. God, Kenny battle. He was a God. He was, he, he was Lou Henson. Don't make me put pictures of his hair up. Cause I'll fucking do it. You try me, sir. I don't regret those decisions. You guys remember Lou Monty, RJC man, Monty trying to suggest my take on the ACC narrative being created by ESPN. Oh, Oh, so oh, now no. it's an ESPN Listen, narrative. These guys, these these pedos at Disney, I got to <laughs> tell you something. The narratives they're creating out there, and I was talking to MTG about this the other day. Her and I were having a conversation about kicking the speaker out, and she brought up to me that, you know, like Princess Leia, that, that's a story of pedos. And you know what? To me, the ACC, they're the ones creating the narrative that the ACC is lesser than. Right? I mean, you look at Michael Jordan. Do you remember how good he was? And not that the other thing that nobody wants to talk about, and the ACC constantly gets degraded for the shit. He was wearing Converse, not Air Jordans back in the day. <laughs> nobody wants to tell you that. LA gear, fuck that. He was wearing Converse. <laughs> this is not scripted. I that's off the top Dude, of my head. You can't replace this talent right here, bro. This is incredible. <clears throat> ACC narrative being created by ESPN is not a thing. It's just foolish on his part. I'm not stopping, and and it's not a conspiracy theory. Okay, let me. I'm going to go with you on this. Let me just ask you: Did you take Infowars.com? Did you take your meds today? This case is empty. Legitimately, empty. answer the question. The opposite of full. Answer the question. I re you said, is there any other kind of danger than grave danger? I can have the court reporter read it back. I don't need to have it read back to me like I'm a child. I got UConn winning it all. The, well, because the Big East is the best conference in the country. It's not fucking real. Right? All right. All right. <laughs> Admittedly, I chose violence today with this shit, and I don't know why. <laughs> um, already an hour and 15 minutes and only 39 likes help grow the show. Yeah, we're only at 80,000 subs. If yeah, you could help on, grow dude. the show. Come on. That'd be great. Hit the like button. We've had over 700 views today. The countdown the like to 100,000 has started, bro. It is. Uh, Eric and Rowley, the only chance the Royals have it being 500 is if uh, the season is only two games. But the Royals are the best basketball team in the country. And stuff. I mean. Okay, good talk. They're in the ACC, right? The Kansas City Royals. The realignment happened. Did you guys miss that story? The Royals are in the... Uh, Big Daddy Magic just simply says, hey, oh, player. Oh, dude. Anyone you want to talk about last night or? Northeast Ohio, Boise State fan. I, if this is the Mountain West is the best basketball conference in the country, I'm going to lose my dude. shit. Uh, breaking news. A new Cleveland Brown stadium with a dome right next to the main airport is moving forward. Oh, money, wow. money, money. I talked to James 
and and he said that that they're going to move their stadium right next to the airport. Isn't and that great? The thing that Oak State James told me about the new stadium is the concession stands. He's really excited because they're going to serve for the first 10,000 fans through the gate, you get a free Cleveland steamer from Marge. The, 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 and I don't, I'm not calling anybody out, but her dietary habits are not that great. She's kind of, she's large. She's, she's, I mean, and, and they're going to honor her on Ozempic night, but that's like a month later. But the Cleveland steamer is free and Marge is going to hook you up. She's had a lot of oats in the last month to get ready for this. <laughs> I don't know. I, I uh, Eric and Raleigh, the Cincinnati Royals. Yeah, RJC uh-huh. Men's. Oh, uh-huh. look, Skyline Chili. There's nothing. Nothing <laughs> produces. A, nothing produces a Cleveland steamer like Skyline Chili. <laughs> nothing. You use those. You use those lima beans, and there's no telling. I'd wear. I'd wear a face shield and if Monty, I were you, Monty. And, and when I had the Skyline Chili, I had to take one out of washcloth, man's playbook i needed the washcloth <laughs> oh it's so good uh big daddy magic says hey player god's favorite actually victor that i know uh monty is next level bucked up today seriously <laughs> seriously <laughs> you know uh skyline chili equals mud butt water yeah yeah it does skyline chili equals hot dog water my wife <laughs> sent me a story yesterday you want to know the negative impact i've had on the quality of life of my wife she sent me a story yesterday from 7-Eleven. They're introducing um, hot dog flavored sparkling water. Oh, because it's garbage. On April 1st. Dude, what? Anybody want to? My wife's like, it's an April Fool's joke. <laughs> Would you, if, if, they, oh. if they legitimately sold hot dog flavored sparkling water, would you try it? No. You no. wouldn't Hell try no. it? No. Nope. Okay. Nope. Yeah, next question. Should we act ask Jake Retzloff about that? Yeah, we should. Jake, let me ask you something. <laughs> I no. Uh Gumby Fresh Out. Skyline Chili greater than five guys burgers. No, don't don't no. don't come in here spreading your RJC man like rumors. I'm a carb eating motherfucker. I know that that, you know, uh Eric and Raleigh, the double A Richmond flying squirrels. Yeah. Uh are giving away hot dog scented candles in June. Wow. Okay. Man. Why are we so obsessed with hot dogs in this country? Well, because it's it's a sandwich. What? Why? What? That's why we're obsessed with it. Don't fuck. Anyway, my point is, why are we obsessed with hot dogs in this country? Because they're good? Hot dog flavored water. Uh, are they a sandwich? What kind of... Like, when I was at, in Mesa a couple weekends ago, green relish was amazing yes it's amazing because there's something about a hot dog at a ball game that's the thing now hot dog or italian beef because the italian Dude. beef was amazing it was i only had one and i regret my decisions i should have had more italian beef uh john delon i hear that the new cleveland steamer stadium yeah is going to have pot edibles that are so potent you'll be so high you'll forget you're in the shithole otherwise known as cleveland wow Bro, dude, <laughs> what? Why is Cleveland getting so much flack this morning? I, I, you know, oh my god! And then John, John, did you wake up on the wrong side of the bed? You just said Five Guys is overrated AF, and you expect us He's to continue. overrated AF. Listen to me. Listen to me. We had some issues in the comments section yesterday. This by far is worse than all of that. You just said that Five Guys is overrated. It was up to me. Your ass would be in timeout. <laughs> okay. And apparently chili triggers you all as well. The Nye guy. Let's cut out the middleman and just dump the skyline chili straight into the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. You that kind of thought that's the kind of thought process we need on this. Yeah, show. you made it better, dude. Thank we don't you. need what the AC. Well, listen, Monty, the AC. Do you remember 1937? Yeah, when ESPN got created. Now the narrative from ESPN about the ACC is alive and well. But Wake Forest versus Bethune Cookman in 1964. That's where the proving ground of the ACC is the best conference today is. Fuck, I worked in Bethune Cookman. 
I don't even get an extra like for that. <laughs> I said Bethune Cookman. Monty, Monty, where's Bethune Cookman? Where, well, do they cook a lot there? Or what's the you issue know where here? Bethune Cookman is yeah. in Monty's heart? Well, Bethune Cookman. John DeLon, settle down, Jake. I, I would offer the same advice to you, sir. You, yeah. God damn it. Uh, Dakota Tubbs, front to back or back to front? Dude. <laughs> Daniel Dixon, what's up, my dude? Where have you been? Good to see you. Monty, show a place you need to watch to get food, a good laugh. You do. We try to have fun. Okay, RJ Seaman or Big Daddy Magic? RJ Seaman. Okay, Big Daddy Magic. Hey, Playa, will you please tell me more about S3 Blind giving away weed? Because I'll book a flight right now. I'll oh, wow. do it. Look, if you oh, he don't know nothing. If you could tell me about the washcloth king of Cleveland. Yeah. <clears throat> Deshaun Watson's nuts giving away free weed? Come on, Monty. 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 RJ Seaman. Dakota, when I... When I are that skyline, my balls okay, were bro, hit with. Listen to me, dude. If you're gonna comment on the show, you, you got to comment correctly. English. Do yeah. you speak it? Yeah. Wait. Did you really say that? I don't know why this is just impacting me now. Even little Jizzy's like Five Guys is good, but their prices have gotten out of hand. I'll have Five Guys for lunch today. Do not. Do not. Okay. Five Guys for lunch me. or Jack for breakfast. Your mom. I don't, Jack, what's going on with Jack in the Box in Utah? What do you mean? There's no line. I just think that they haven't promoted it heavy. I think that they didn't. They're just like, yeah, we're gonna, we'll, we'll get busy. And in the, in the, the, uh, the last time I went for us, it was very busy. It took me forever. It took like forty minutes hmm. to get through there. I don't. You know, I, <sighs> I don't love Jack in the Box. I'm kind of. I, I what have we had it twice? I know that hurts. That hurts. What are we doing? It's the pucker effect. Yeah, I understand I, I, it. Like, okay. I totally get it. But I don't. I. I w once a year, like when no. we go through the Jeezy. But now that it's down the street from my house, I never eat there. Mrs. Monty was always like, "Oh, dude, you're screwed. Your cholesterol is going through the roof, fatty." Like she was convinced. That I was going to live in the drive through line at Jack in the Box. I've never gone through the drive through line at Jack in the Box. I have not. We, Mrs. Monty and I tried once the first day they were open and they shut it down early. I think we've eaten there twice. I think that's it. Uh -huh. It's just, I don't know, man. Like the, the problem is, and I, I, I continue to say, I love, I love a good burger. I do. Number one, fast food's not as good as it used to be. Right. Fast food is not good. I do not enjoy eating out. I would even I would even apply that to like sit down places. It's I, not I, as good I, as it used to be. Not, uh, yeah, it's just not what it used to be. I do think that Jack is pretty reliable. I think you know what you're getting. You, I'm not saying okay. it's great. This is very true. Like you know what you're getting. You know what you're getting. Yeah. You can if you get like I'm an extreme sausage sandwich guy. I get it every time I go there. Yeah. I know exactly what that sando is going to be. But. Like Five Guys, I agree with the commenter that like the prices of Five Guys is a thirty dollar meal minimum. Minimum. Minimum, dude, thirty bucks, and it's just and like that's assuming you didn't get soda. Yeah, which I don't drink. I don't drink, right? Like it is, it is one of those things where Five Guys, Jack in the Box, the 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 pandemic, and we've talked about this ad nauseum on the show. The pandemic changed fast food and food service forever. Hundred percent. It's a takeout business. There's no doubt about it. But I could take it or leave it with Jack. No, that's just man. That's dude. And I, I don't know how we're going to continue the show. You know, but you know what the other problem is? Like Super Chicks is so flipping good. Like I, there's just better options. If you, I eat fast food so rarely. Like Mrs. Monty and I were out and about this weekend. We got food out and came home and cooked it. I had sushi. We went to the, she took me to the symphony. My wife's a deer. She yeah. Did you end up liking that? Or oh, I loved it. Of that? I fucking loved it. The symphony was, the Utah symphony was amazing. We saw, I can't remember the guy's name, but we saw a percussionist and the entire symphony playing with this guy. Like he had this wood xylophone sitting on top of these barrels and it was awesome. Just going it ham. was so good. You guys, it was so good. 
and I love classical music for those of you who don't know, like when I'm, when I'm working through my day, a lot of times I listen to classical music. When I need to relax, I listen to classical music. I get so little time by myself. I am almost never alone. Last Saturday, after I had a terrible driving range session, I actually didn't go get a haircut like certain people did. Yeah, did looking fresh, you know, hit the golf ball a long way right down the middle. And then I had to go get cut. That is what it is. Yeah. I came, I went back home. Yeah. And I lay in my basement. It's very dark and it is chilly. Yeah. And I get so little time by myself. I laid on my basement floor, had a little classical music rolling, and I did the Huberman breathe in, breathe out thing. Right. Not the six or 12 girlfriend thing. But the breathe in, breathe out thing yeah, to classical music. Hey, look, it's Jake Retzloff, who I've heard. Now, I could be wrong. I've heard that Jake Retzloff is having, like, an unbelievable spring football season. Jake, I had somebody very, very close to you. Now, I'm not going to name names in all seriousness. I've heard that this is – it described to me that you have never looked better than you look right now in a BYU – in a in BYU football that you have never played as well as you are playing now. Is this accurate reporting? I think so, for sure. I think I, I think no doubt. I think that I got a chance to develop in the system last year. I got a good offseason and why wouldn't I keep getting better? I feel like I should always look the best I've ever looked because you should always be getting better. Well you were also on tape standing next to Steve Young and I gotta be honest with you. Um Steve, Steve looked better than you. Um, and then he hasn't thrown a football in a decade. Um, and he still throws a football better than you. How good is that guy? Like, are you serious with Steve Young? I uh, saw the BYU video of the alumni game. And he doesn't look better than you throwing a football. But he, when he hoists that left arm up in the air, are you just not putting the right arm up and being like, touchdown? Like, that's Steve, you stood next to Steve Young and you messed around in an alumni game with Steve Young. That had to be pretty cool for you. Yeah, it was unbelievable. It was incredible. I was so happy for the opportunity. And it's alumni game is so sick because you get all those guys to come back. And uh, But that guy to come back is pretty incredible because that's a legend. Everybody knows that. And so now it was so sweet to go see him, hang out with him on the field. Uh, you know, you saw the clips at the social media team had us get and stuff like that. And he actually posted me on his Instagram, giving him me, giving him that interview. And so uh, wow. it was, it was pretty sick. It, it was pretty incredible. And I, I was happy to get it done and uh, be able to just meet the guy, talk to the guy. I, you know, of course I wish you had more time with him because that guy's everywhere and everybody wants a piece of him. That's for sure. But uh, yeah, no, he's, he's an incredible guy. He's just, he's such a guy, you know what I mean? Like a football guy. He's yes. running around the field still. He's still an active dude. You can tell he loves the game. He loves hanging around with the old dudes. And uh, it was a lot of fun to, to, to meet him and to be around those guys. Do you have the appreciation? This is going to sound like a simple question, but I want to hear you talk about this. Do you have an appreciation for not just who he is as a dude, but do you have an appreciation for how good he was as a quarterback and how unique and just rare it is for a guy like you in your developmental stage where you're just now coming into your stardom to spend that kind of moment or that kind of time exposed to him. Like, what does that mean to you? It's incredible. I mean, like I said, it, it was so cool to be out there with, with, with everybody. And, and that guy, especially he's, he's something else. And like I said, I wish I had more time with him. I wish I could sit down and talk to him. I wish I had, you know, an hour, two hours to pick his brain. Um, but unfortunately I didn't because was, there happened to be an alumni game going on. Um, so, so I, I wish I could get more out of him. I got what I got out of him. I learned a couple things and asked him a couple questions, but did not, did not get what I wanted, you know, did not get the most I could have gotten if it was a sit down conversation, but no, that guy's, it's incredible to have that guy. He, fun fact, I've, that was the first time I met him in person, but I've met him via text message um it's the iowa state game it's my first start right my first home start and we're it's a friday my parents are in town They're, my mom and my aunt are walking around campus just like seeing it and stuff like that and uh walking to the bookstore and walk around just seeing the campus and stuff and and steve is there with his daughter on a visit 
for because she's a track runner and and he's walking around with tom homo and tom sees my mom wearing my hoodie it, it was like one of the hoodies we sold with retzloff on the back and number 12 and so tom calls calls her over and say like, hey and so my mom actually met steve way before i ever had the chance to but i only know this because i get a random i mean we're, we're about to get on the bus to go to the hotel on friday night and i get a text it's a selfie of Steve, my mom, my aunt, and Tom just randomly on campus. And I was like, what am I looking at? It was like, hey, Jake, I got I got the text here somewhere. But it was like, hey, it's Steve Young. I'm like, uh, what? Wow. I was, it was, hey, Jake, it's Steve Young. Uh, I, don't think, I think it took me 10 minutes to get past the first four or five words. That's awesome. It was, that, it was it, unreal. It, you're at a quarterback university. Like, let's let's be on. Like, I mean, th- I don't know. I just think those moments are so special. We were today's opening day in baseball, as everybody knows. Yeah. And one of my favorite memories was uh, now I'm 178 years old. Um, I found the Fountain of Youth. Uh, but <laughs> back in my back in my youth, I we used to have a thing called Kodak Photo Day, where you could go on the field at Wrigley Field. And I'll never forget Leon Durham with his massive arm. He put his arm around me and took a picture with me. And so, like, obviously, I wasn't a baseball player. Like, you're a football player. But I just remember that that impacted me. So I have to believe that as somebody that plays football, I I had to know that that was a a special moment. And now knowing that your mom met Steve Young before you did, that's crazy. Did you get the digits, though? Did you, like, were you like, hey, let's – you know, can I chew your ear for a while? Like, did you, you didn't well, get the digits? I didn't need to because I already had it. Oh, he texted you from his phone? He texted me from his phone. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. I thought, you. oh, okay. I missed that. I, mean, I thought your mom texted you. In, oh, wow. Okay, cool. So you have the digits. I mean, I don't want to flex, but. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. That's what. See, See, that's amazing. That's the, to me, that's amazing. Who else is on the list of people that, that you, you yeah, would flex more like that flex. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. You've got the phone out flex more. Like do you, who, that, who okay. else there's like the, the, the thing says legend on it. That's the funny thing. There's Steve young on your phone. Like who else, like who else would be a flex in your, do you have anybody else worth flexing on in your, phone? <laughs> I don't know. Not, not like that. Not like, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Uh, Jake Retzloff presented by our good friends at Big O Tires and American Fork, your total car care experts. Make sure you find them on social media, including uh, Instagram, Big O Tires uh, AF. Uh, make sure you tell them you heard about it on the Monty Show. So in all seriousness, I've heard great things about you. Like this is, I routinely talk to people at BYU about football and people have been raving about your leadership and your, your composure. Not necessarily football. The people I've spoken to have said that you're remarkably composed and they you you appear a, a much different leader this year than you were last year. Now, obviously, some of that is exposure, some of that is being around the program, but I would imagine that you feel you feel pretty good about the fact that the people that you are around every day consider you to be a composed, mature leader of that football program. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's just part of the leader position. When you're, when you're a quarterback, you got to accept that no matter what you, if you want to be or not, you're you're a leader in, in the in the, on the team. And so, that being that, you just got to understand that going forward and and embrace that. And that's important for for young quarterbacks to do and and older quarterbacks to do. It's just once once you understand that you are in that role, it's time to embrace it and and be that guy that guys look forward to. Because regardless whether you whether you like it or not, after every play, the guys are looking right back at you good or bad. So you got to be able to respond the right way, good or bad. You got to be able to, you know, bite the bullet, eat the, eat the blame. You know what I mean? Take responsibility for what's going on in the offense because the quarterback is so much of what goes on in the offense. So it's a, uh, it's a position that I love to be in. I love to be a leader. I feel like I'm a natural leader. And so it's, it's easier for me to do it. I don't feel like it's a, uh, you know, a, a strain for me to do it. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I love the, uh, the, opportunity to be a leader on the team and to be you know a face that guys look towards because i feel like you know in when time it's funny because we had a scrimmage two weeks ago in our scrimmage uh i was getting hot at the refs and like um 
but I was getting really hot at the refs, but then I turn around and get in the huddle and be chilling. It'd just be, just be normal. You know what I mean? And, and people didn't understand that about me yet. I don't, you know what I mean? I haven't shown a lot of pissed at the refs moments like I, like I was at those times because I wasn't live. And so if a D defensive player got one finger on me, they called me down. And there was one play where it was a sprint out play where I get around the edge, but the guy grabbed the tail of my shirt and the guy blows whistle, calls me down. I threw a touchdown. And I was like, are you kidding me right now? And uh, anyway, so I went off on the ref, which I probably shouldn't have done. And, and I just come back to the huddle and I'm just composed. I'm just normal again. And so <laughs> it's funny to, it's funny how the guys learn that about me and they learn that, Oh, I'm just, you know, I'm going on for the ref because yeah, the ref needs to go on, but I can also just, it's just flip it right back into, you know, quarterback mode and just be a quarterback in the huddle. So that's something that um, I feel like I do really well. I feel like I know how to be, you know, level headed and aware in certain situations. And like, if I ever get, it's funny, if I ever get like super mad on the field and I'm yelling at somebody or like a, an opponent or something, I'm getting into it with them. And, and if somebody grabs me, like, like on our team, like to protect whatever, you know what I mean? I'm like, bro, I'm good. Don't worry about, it. I'm good. Like, I'm not going to do anything stupid. You know what I mean? It's pretty funny how like, I just found the ability to yell and get all wild up and all the emotions. It looks like all the emotions going at me. And the next thing I know, it's like, okay, reset. Now we got a job to do. So uh, it's pretty funny to have those two different sides of it. Cause yeah, I, I, I'm a composed guy, but I wouldn't say I'm like the, the chill guy on the field. Cause I play with so much energy, so much passion that I'm not going to say that like, I'm the guy who's like, like this, like a rods like this the whole time. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's level headed the entire yeah. time. He doesn't get too high and high, low and lows. Me, I'm more. I mean, I'll start here, but I'm going up. Just yeah. Constantly, way more. You know, my baseline is five times higher than anybody else's, and so like, I'm gonna have the energy and stuff like that on the field, um, while avoiding the dips and the and the low lights and stuff like that. But, but yeah. Yeah, I'm being just, the same guy when you're playing well and when you're not playing as well as you want to be playing, like it, it's and it obviously being the same guy when you win and when you lose. But I, I think it's absolutely part of being having that elite mentality and that elite mental strength that makes quarterbacks great is you have to be able to spike. You have to be able to celebrate. You have to be able to 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 celebrate your wins and understand why you're losing or why you're not, you know, why was that ball behind the receiver? Like, or why yeah. why did I not make the right read? Like you have to be able to do those things. And I think that's one of the things that I, I truly think we saw that on the field. Obviously, I haven't seen you in person in spring ball, but I think on the field last year, as a year came to an end, we already saw you doing that. So I, yeah. I think it would almost be disappointing if we didn't see you taking these big, and maybe not big jumps, but if we didn't see you growing as a leader and growing as a as a a, a guy and a quarterback, I I think we'd all be surprised by that, Jake. Well, then I am. Then we're there we go. Living up to expectations. Are you the Surprising. starting quarterback at BYU? <laughs> <laughs> Um, give me the give me the political answer it's okay go for it. <laughs> you know i'm not worried about that kind of thing i'm just worried about getting better and every day just pushing the envelope and just competing with the guys <laughs> look we're taking it one snap at a time here in, in provo it's what we do then we go get acai bowls and, and we do it all again tomorrow you know i'm just happy to contribute to the ball club very well done <laughs> very well done jake i i give you an a plus for that but um thank you on the field, in-game action, in-rep action, like how, how have you how have you felt like grade, grade your performance a little bit here? Uh, yeah, I'm super stoked about the way I've been playing. To be honest, like I don't know that I could put a grade to it, um, but I'm just super stoked about it. I think that there's a lot of lot of good things. But, I, you know, it starts with me, the way I'm playing, but I would just say overall the entire offense is taking another step. We're, we're miles ahead of where we were last year at this point. And so that's what's super exciting about the, about what's going on right now. Like, yeah, I'm playing good, but it's everybody around me is also playing at another level, which is so good to see, so fun to see. And you really get to see what this offense does and how this offense goes and how we can dominate, you know, anybody who steps on the field with us. Yeah. And I think, I think that's huge. Like what is, so we're, we're coming down to the end here, man. Like now we're getting into, we're, we're start, I, I'm I'm getting to that point of spring ball for you guys where it feels like, Everything is moving very quickly, and I feel like you guys are running out of uh, running out of reps here. Like, is it moving as? Because it's going fast for me. Is it going fast? No, for you? it's it flew by for me. There's no doubt it flew by. The fact that we're two practices left is crazy. I mean, we had practice 14 tomorrow and 15 on Saturday. That's it, and we're done. So, like, it's uh, 
it went so fast and uh just it came and it went and i you know what i mean it was just it, that's why you know you gotta live in the moment don't live looking for something else live in what's going on right now because uh it goes by fast and yeah this spring ball went by incredibly fast and uh it's crazy that we're already almost at summer workouts and the heat of the summer and uh it's, and it's just because then because then you go you go summer and then now you're just like oh the next thing is fall camp here we go again let's get it going now so it's uh it's exciting yeah i can't believe like i said i can't believe it's easter already like it, it is the first quarter of the year's over it, it it is wild what um what do you have left to accomplish what do you need to do for you the quarterback and for your offense in in camp here when it comes to camp it's continuing to rep uh just the stuff that's new like we just put in a new little concept uh the other last practice and we ran it and we completed most of the balls and it's a timing route too. So it's like to complete most of the balls on a timing route, the first day it goes in, it's pretty, really good. And, uh, the ones that we were off on, we were barely off on. They're still like hitting the receiver's hands are just a little too far out there. And so like, uh, just continuing to build that, uh, you know, that co connection with the receivers in live game, because it's different to run out, you know, against air and, and throw the ball. Like that's not, really where you build that that chemistry like yeah you get some sort of feel for the guy but then once it's once the bullets are flying that's when you get to really get that feel for a guy and uh it's been fun to get that with a lot of the receivers this this off season and so yeah it's just more work baby more work it's awesome love it so on a non-football note oh boy 711 for April Fools is rolling why? out uh, is rolling out a why? why because I need to know if Jake would try Jake, this. Jake, I not. apologize. Go ahead, Jake. No, don't apologize for me. It, this, I'm apologizing you know, that yeah. Jake. I'm apologizing for so that 7 Jake. 11, the other 7 Eleven is an April Fools joke is gonna troll people by rolling out a can of hot dog water that's like sparkling. Yes, yeah, sparkling, sparkling hot, hot dog, dog water. water. Would you try this? Are you somebody who likes to try the spicy chip, the hot dog water? Where do you come down on all this? I went to Dave's Hot Chicken during the season and had the, like, the spiciest one. Me me and four other guys, three other guys, so there's four of us, we, we, we ordered one of them, and we cut it into four different quarters, and we all ate it. And I think half of us drank the entire milkshake while we were trying to get rid of the, the, the hot spicy. So, sure, I'm down to try some oh. something really spicy, oh. something really yeah. flavorful. But hot dog water? Why? What the, what's the point? Come on. Like maybe he, yeah, I don't know. You did the chip thing at Christmas. Yeah, there was we all a went chip back to LA. Challenge, yeah. We all went back to LA for Christmas for our, to see our family. And you know they had those like red hot smoking chip things. Yeah, yeah. and you almost you dude. you almost died. You I, went into cardiac like a, arrest, I had bro. A tiny little piece of one chip, and it just ended me, man. <laughs> I for like twenty minutes. I'm last not night, we went to dinner with the quarterbacks last night, and uh, we went to. Uh, Teppanyaki place and <laughs> we uh we ordered a couple of sushi rolls you know with the whole meal and stuff and so with the sushi roll comes a little tiny carrot with some wasabi on it yeah and we go uh this is funny as heck we go hey lugo hey you had you like carrots bro you like carrots he's like yeah man he's like dude this is fire it's carrot with a little guacamole on it bro it's oh. fire <laughs> oh my he didn't hesitate the freshman kid that's a oh my gosh it was awesome and he actually you know he's like face gets straight red and he doesn't do spice at all we find out afterwards that he hates spice like he does not do any spice and this guy's face is red he's spitting in his napkin oh it was so golden we were laughing our butts off at the table oh my gosh we got i, I was like how do you think that carrot has a and the it doesn't look like guacamole. The only thing that looks like is green, but it was so funny. I'm telling you right now, it was so funny. Dude, that is cool. Like, because <laughs> guac is one of those things that you just shove in your face. Like, yeah, it's good. A it's... ton of it. Dude. <laughs> we thought it was guac, so we bit the, we had the whole thing. Because the carrot had a drop the size of this. It was very small. It wasn't. Yeah. I mean, it was something, but it wasn't a lot, but it was something for sure. And so it was like, oh, yeah, Dude, that I'm kid was like. Caucasian. He, he was like, oh, my God. It was so oh. funny. We just watched him eat it and turn face turn red. And the other quarterbacks who were sitting to his left, because I was to his right, with, and we got him to do it. And the other two to the left are, like, figuring it out. As it's happening, they're like, 
that's not guac. There's no, no. way that's guac. You so who paid for dinner? Uh, Brother Brigham. I like it. I like yeah, it, so. Brigham. We like that. That's good. I always, I always am curious about that. Uh, off the field, anything interesting of note? Any like we were sitting here arguing about about this um, hot dog flavored water and drone deliveries. So I will, I will leave you with this question: Do you want your? And I don't shop at Walmart, but Walmart wants to is now starting drone delivery. Chick Fil A, which is one of the most overrated fast foods ever, uh, and Seven Eleven. Those three: Walmart, Chick Fil A. And 7-Eleven are all doing drone deliveries now. Do you want drone deliveries? Maybe I should buy a BB gun and shoot them down. So I just have to yes. <laughs> yes. I don't get drones. It. I don't understand it. I don't need, especially with my food. Yeah. First of all, I'm never eating Chick-fil-A again. I'm yeah, a food in the star. air. Food in uh, the air is just. No. Like it's going to get cold so much faster. Yes. Think just about the time it. of year it is right now. Go get it. Like get off your, if you're gonna eat the cholesterol and the fat, go, at least it burn burns some calories on the way. On the way. <laughs> right? Yeah. Where's your go-to know. chicken sandwich? Go-to chicken sandwich, like place. Yeah. Where do you go to get a good chicken sandwich? I'm not gonna lie. Like the place Chubby's up in Orem. There's a couple of them. Yeah. Closer to you guys, but yeah. Chubby's has the uh, what's it called? Oh, what's it called? It's the one with the coleslaw and the barbecue sauce. Yes. Oh, it's so good. That is so good. What's it called? I forget what it's called, but shout out Chubby's. Uh, Aaron and Will over there. Those are the owners of the one in Orem and Will's whole brothers all on the other. It's a pretty sweet place. Go get stuff from Chubby's. But uh, yeah, no, that chicken sandwich, I forget what it's called, but that chicken sandwich is something else. Southern Crispy fire. Barbecue? Yeah, the Southern Crispy Chicken. Yeah. There wow, go. that looks good. Jake pulled it up on his lap. That looks good. That dude. looks good, dude. That, that looks thing good, is man. that thing is fire. That that would be my best chicken sandwich to go to. Have you been to Super Chicks yet? I have not. Oh, dude, you got to go to now. You got to get a. You got to take a personal loan. Go to the credit union or the bank, <laughs> dude. It's, it's ridiculous. Super yeah, it's, what is it? It used to be healthier and less expensive, and now it's more expensive and unhealthier. How does that work? But you're you. Are you a Jack in the Box fan? Not a fan or a hater. Thank you. It's op- There's one that opened right down the street from my house like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. There has been no fanfare, no line out to the street, nothing. But the stupid Cane's place across yeah, Kane. the street for six, eight, ten weeks around yeah. the block, blocking traffic, creating a mess. Chaos. Like, why do you smile? Do you like Cane's? I don't know. Cane's has something else to it. I don't know. It's weird that a place like that with no menu, just the chicken, is like that crazed about. But I mean, the chicken's good. The sauce is what makes the chicken. The fries are only good when fresh. So, but it is a good place and it's a good vibe. Like they do a good job of making it like Cane's is an experience as much as it's a uh, fast food place inside. Like I know back home, they built the Cane's during uh, while I was in high school. And the minute that Cane's was open, we were there after every football game. Love it. The I've been to Canes once. It, the whole town. When I lived in Phoenix. Yeah. I don't know if I can go back, Jake. Like you're making me think I'm missing something, but I don't eat a lot of fast food. I just it, yeah. I think the quality's falling off. Neither do I. I mean, I'll have Canes every once in a while. Every once every call. I think Canes might be the most. Like, I might get Canes more than any other fast food. Thinking about it right now, like I think that okay. I don't know what other fast food I because I don't eat fast food that much. But yeah, yeah I'll go get Canes. Canes just. It's pretty simple too. Maybe the simple factor is why people like it so much. I it's like it. You chicken. know, Jake, that's why we like you. Cause you're simple. All you do is p- that's awkward. It's always good to see you, Jake. You look, you look healthy and well. And I've uh, like I said, continue to kick ass, enjoy these last two practices. And uh, we'll talk to you next Thursday. Sounds good, man. Hey, well, uh, shout out my mom for giving birth to me 21 years ago today. Wow. Yeah, it's your birthday. What? What, what are you gonna do? First of all, I did so shout out mom for that. I get a lot of flack in the BYU community because I always comment about your clothing. But first of all, you've got the Jays on, Let's go, right? Baby. He's got the he's got the Jordan shirt on. So yeah, man, the Jordan shirt. The I got some uh, Lulu pants on, and then there'll be the Jordan see, one I'm shoes you, today. That's where it's at right now, bro. Bro, I, should, I, you know I what? There you go. You guys just yeah, sharing dude, your love of recently. Blue. Recently, so, I hopped okay, on the are way. You a, are you, what, so are you a jogger guy? Do you like the cuffed ankle or more loose ankle? 
Yeah, I like the cuffed ankle more. Yeah. I can't. The loose ankle from it's just like too loosey goosey, right? I got yeah. some BYU sweats that are like that that I only wear like if I want to be super comfy, I'll wear those. But like if I'm walking around and stuff, I like I like the cuffed ankle. Yeah, Let's let it all hang out in those BYU sweatpants. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> got the him. old ones. I got the him. old ones. The, the um, old ones. What are you doing? For your, so you're 21. Are you? A, are you? So uh, getting well, no, wasted. You're not. I mean, he's on the honor. Code. So, um, obviously I'm going to have plenty of mocktails tonight. Um, see, that's perfect. It's a good job. It's a good save right there. Uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> but 21, like I, you're a football gonna, player, which means you, you, you are, you age, you age more like you're far beyond your years in, at 21. But dude, what do you, are you, did you get any gifts yet? Like, like what's your, what's your day look like? Um, well, it's funny as my bro- both my brother's birthdays are also in March, and they're like two weeks ago. One's 12th, one's the 15th. So, like, everybody who like sends us a birthday card or something, they send it like all at once on probably the 10th or something. So, I get it, you know, two or three weeks before I ever actually have my birthday. But, uh, um, so I got some letters and stuff like that. Um, but today, I think, uh, what am I doing today? Of course, we got workouts, so it'll be fun birthday workout um, meetings. That'll be even more fun. Class, that'll be the most fun. Um, no, but after all that, I think uh, me and some of the guys, and we're going to go bowling, uh, just a bunch of the guys, and just go have fun, hang out with the boys. What else would you do on your birthday? So, can, yeah, you, for real. can you spin it? Are you, are you a bowler? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You're competitive, yeah. aren't you? I love. Bowling. I bet you bowling. are one con- competitive, bro. You must be crazy competitive. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me too. Well, happy birthday! Yeah. Stay you. healthy, stay strong, enjoy your mocktails tonight, and um, we will see you on your 21st and seven day birthday next Thursday. <laughs> Sounds so good. I'll see you on the next week. I just see <laughs> there you go jake retzloff i see i love that he has a sense of humor he does he so does. many dudes do not have a sense of humor get on his instagram and wish him a happy birthday find jake retzloff on instagram he's a good dude he is such a good guy you guys he is he's just salt to the earth we've talked to so many athletes on this show who just like he, we're talking about canes. We're talking about yeah. hot, you had to bring up hot dog flavored water. I had water. to, dude. I had to. Know Why my guy comes down on it, man? Why? And and you guys, you guys have had you and Jake have already had like you're textually engaged about Gatorade. Yeah. Which yeah, I thank Jake you for. Golf's, Jake balls like. So did you get yourself a case of Gatorade Zero? I did. Yeah. He's been bringing me Gatorade Zero. Yeah. And I do. I love it. Yeah. But you haven't brought me grape. Do you have any grape? Uh no. That case didn't include grape. That case that is case empty. That case is empty. Uh, no, it had lemon lime. Okay. Uh, fruit punch. Awesome. And the white colored one, the I think it's like a berry ish flavor okay. of sorts, which I don't love as much. But I was like, yeah, dude, I'll get Gatorade this <sighs> week. Why not? OG Gary, cucumber lime Gatorade is gas. That's what he said, too, man. You know, yeah. I just, you know uh nil cha-ching exactly but how about how about jake being 20 that's the crazy, crazy thing about dude. professional and at this level jake retzloff is a professional athlete yeah but he's i would put him at 25 yeah i Maturity mean like wise, that's he's, yeah he's yeah well beyond the training years. growing maturing physically that that all happens much quicker when you're a professional athlete yeah that's the amazing thing and i have heard so much about his maturity and growth over this over a uh, year over a year yes. it's it's been crazy it has been absolutely crazy uh rjc man yes luke agree but every week is a bit much what happened now yeah what are we doing luke said uh can't you can cheer for that guy let's go jake get that big 12 title oh i don't think every week's too much with him no especially during fall football where he's one i think he's won the job yeah uh, i'll be honest with you i think that from what i understand he is he has been stellar he has been impre- like stellar, impressive, fantastic. Everything you want. You've heard it like he's been really good on the field, and he has he has been a leader off the field. He has been, I think he's won the job. I, I don't know how you wouldn't give it to him. Is Brother Brigham a reference to the school buying dinner? I believe that it is. It, 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 
We'll leave it that at that. But, yeah. You know. Uh, yes, Luke, agree, but every week's a bit much. Uh, Iowa State versus Houston for an NCAA final. Dude. Gas. That would be amazing. I think the Iowa State Illinois game. Don't miss it. Yeah. It is, it is going to be the uh, it is going to be the game of the the tournament to this point. Um, and I think that you're looking at you're looking at something where what if the spread on that game is one and a half, one forty six and a half is the number. <sighs> Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Well, we're out of time. Yeah. So we don't get to talk about conspiracy theories. No, we don't. Do you guys understand that Joe Biden didn't knock the bridge down in Baltimore? Can Money. we just at Money. least can we just can we just at least agree that nobody went out of their way to be like, all right, today's the day we're going to knock that bridge down. Man. Fuck them. Yeah, screw Baltimore. The the conspiracy theories surrounding trying to make Pete Buttigieg a hero that you sent a cargo ship and murdered construction workers and yeah. I, like that, like that's we, where we did, are. Did we learn nothing from the prince, Princess Kate story? Kate Middleton. Nope. nope. She's dead. He cheated on yeah, her. That's She's the in princess, hiding. So that's the princess, dude. This is Biden. Come on. Stop. We did not knock the bridge down intentionally. No. Like that's that's the thing that's crazy to me. We knocked it down intentionally. No. We did. We did. Uh, Force Ghost Fabio. That's a bridge too far, Monty. See what he did there? So did. that's a joke about a bridge, and he's working the word bridge in, and it all kind of works together. Giggity says, of course it wasn't Joe Biden. It was a deep state. Yeah, Duh. obviously, left-wing deep state. Duh. Yeah, Duh. Uh, Big Daddy Magic. Hey, player, it's weeks since BYU lost in March Madness. You're tracking it. Uh, Giselle was sad. I uh, LFG, I love out West College football, Utah, BYU. Both have great traditions and fans. Yes, indeed. Um, Joe Biden hates the Orioles. That's why he knocked it down. I've well, heard that. You know, as an Orioles fan, I understand why you're really upset about that, dude. I mean, that's got to be really tough. As an or Gary, <laughs> 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 okay, we just need to chill with the conspiracy theories. Yeah, we need to like relax. Stop with that. Yeah, stop. Just yeah. stop. Make sure you download the Prize Pick app. Uh, use the promo code Monty. You get 100 deposit matching. It's opening day. Let's do it. Let's compete. I'll give it if for everybody who sends me a screenshot of your uh, prize picks, your new prize picks deposits. That's what we need. New new prize pick accounts only. Major League Baseball in the NCAA tournament tonight. It's a great day on prize picks. We'll give one of you a $50 Amazon gift card. All you have to do is DM Jake uh, or um, on Instagram. Yeah. Um, MLB Network is now available on Hulu. Nice crazy that's cool oh wow Lamelo ball will re remain out the final two weeks of the season with the ankle injury yeah. dude i yeah and it, no it's too late show's over yeah. uh download the uh prize picks app make sure that you use the promo code monty uh to get 100 percent deposit matching let's play prize picks on on opening day major league baseball prizepicks.com or download the app in your app store use the promo code monty we'll give away 150 dollars amazon gift card uh, if you screenshot us your uh, plays in prize picks for Major League Baseball, hook it up. Do it right now. The Monty Show is always presented by our good friends at The Advocates, theadvocates.com. The best injury attorneys in the business. Listen, man, if you get into an accident, it's not your fault that guy ran that red light. It's not your fault that that guy hit you while you were riding your bike. It's not your fault that your neighbor's dog attacked you. It's not your fault you got hurt at work. You didn't deserve those injuries. You do deserve an advocate. Chapman the Attorney, live online, 24-7, 365. It won't cost you a dime at theadvocates.com. Until Monday, say goodbye, Jake. Goodbye, Jake.